Hello and welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I'm Patricia Steer and... <sighs> Wait, where are you going? Oh, uh, don't walk out like that. Seriously, storming out is just so unprofessional. Oh my God. Seriously, if you're not careful, you're going to cause divisiveness. Come back. Come on, come back, please. Oh, <gasps> she's back. Well, I guess we know who's going to win the 2019 Flatty for the most unreliable flat earther. <laughs> uh, I thought you were going to say absentee presenter, but that's fine. Unreliable. That <laughs> unreliable is good, too. What do you mean unreliable? Well, I relied on you and you weren't there. So, you know, mm. it's a trust test. I fall backwards and instead of catching me, you just take a plane ride. But anyway, that's all old news. Yes, it is. Yes, Welcome it is. all in the live chat and watching the show. This is The Secret Show. And Mark Sargent joins me. And also, we've got a special guest, as if Mark weren't special enough. Uh, we have a man who is taking the movie behind the curve and making it into something far better. May I introduce to you Rodrigo Ferrari Nunes from Portugal. Rodrigo, mm -hmm. thank you for being on with us. Hello, Patricia. Hello, Mark. I'm, I'm actually from Brazil. Oh, but I but live, live in, Portugal. in Portugal. I am in Portugal, so you're right. About that. Yes. Sorry. Sorry about that. Yes. Well, uh, talk about Behind the Curve. Yes, uh, I received a copy of Behind the Curve, so I started looking into it and decided to pick it apart, which is something I did with uh, First Man already. So cut all the scenes from the movie again, reorganizing and see how the narrative is constructed. And so in this case, what I started doing is uh, extracting the experts and comparing them, you know, how much screen time each one of them gets and, and analyzing what they say one after the other together. You know, so I can also compare how long they spend, you know, with looking at flat earthers, looking at Mark and you and Mark together, for example, that was part of, of of the show, a big part of the show. Uh, and then there, there are other people that are featured. So I separated everything like that to so I could start studying it. And so that that's one thing. And then they have the person that gets the most screen time from the skeptics or critics or experts or scientists, or as Mark would have it, the lab goats, um, is Hannah Lore Gerling. Done mm -hmm. more. She gets the most time, and she she apparently doesn't have a PhD. I'm not so sure she does. She's an astrophysicist, right? And this is this is of course uh, for space skeptics discipline that's constructed on theoretical mathematics and premises uh, based on speculations, right? Uh, instead of you know, it's not like engineering uh, a machine or making a computer building something. It's a different kind of science. Right, yet, yet it gets thrown in the mix. So if you're gonna do hydrology, you have to build a dam or something. Say in Holland, for instance, you have to do a really good job, otherwise, you know, it's a big problem. And you, you must be a really good scientist at that. But when it comes to astrophysics, it's an object, the objects that they're talking about are in many ways theoretical. If you think about quasars and black holes, and they had to turn around their own model so many times. Um, with uh, dark energy and dark matter, which are, which are terms that have been used in, in, in this kind of 1600s, 1700s here, I've, I later found out. But so, but the thing is, she makes a test in the beginning that she, she thinks is debunk, it's posed as if it's, it debunks, it really shows how wacky Flat Earth is, but she's looking at a, a website with the plane, plane path, and she says, this is an easy test to perform. And as if that's, you know, the end of the story there. Yeah. You know? And as if so, um, all of us hadn't performed that test very early yeah. into our awakening. Um, if th those of you who have not watched Behind the Curve, you can get it now and download it on Amazon. And where else, Mark? Amazon Prime, uh, Google Play, YouTube videos, and iTunes. 
So you'll know who um, Rodrigo is speaking of. Right. I want to get back to uh, your breakdown of Behind the Curve, Rodrigo, and what you're going to do with the, the footage that you've got. But maybe there's some people who don't know you. I put your channel in the description box of this video, mm -hmm. and now we know that you're from Brazil and you live in Portugal. But um, what do you do on your channel, and how do you feel you fit in, or what's your role that you've picked for yourself in the whole Flat Earth Awakening? Well, I'm a social and cultural anthropologist, and I started looking into the movement by talking to people directly to see how they explain their transformation from a previous model to this model. This is another thing that the movie gets wrong, right? They assume that you, people are reinforcing a previous belief that they have, but it's the, the other way around. They're, they've gone away from previous beliefs that they held. And uh, the most interesting part of this is how people, uh, in one way, I mean, there's so many interesting aspects of, to it, but how people, how does awakening happens? Uh, and all these stories, these are being shared in the beginning. There's lots of people, uh, Karen B has her, my path to, to flat earth is, is, is one of them. But, um, so, and I, I started talking to people directly. I wanted to, to, to compare that as well with ancient cosmologies, indigenous cosmologies, that seem to, to have a different view, right? That science itself, this narrative of mainstream science that becomes atheist materialist in the 1700s, 1800s, it becomes a big wave of, of skepticism against uh, religion, so to speak, uh, is something that we uh, seems to have erased in the, in the cosmology of ancient and indigenous peoples. Seem to have really, uh, even there's a case, Mark Knight, Wakey Wakey, I don't know if you know his channel, yes. he, went, he went to India. And there he found that the, among the followers of the Dalai Lama, the Dalai Lama, they were convinced that science proved that it was a ball, but uh, they realized that it wasn't their worldview for, for the longest time, but it, it, it gets to be convincing in, in a very large scale the story of the globe and uh and people are only willing to go so far as you know the layers of truth if you remember neil armstrong in this very weird speech that he gave i don't know if you remember this yes piercing uh, the uh layers of truth i think was part of the quote. Yeah. so you know there's only so far that people are, are willing to go and one of these experts the Michalakis guy, uh, he was talking about how it gets more and more complex. The explanations get so complex, it, it's beyond what a theory, it, it's, it's so weird the way he puts it in the, in the movie. Uh, because it's, it's like if your theory gets to have a certain level of complexity, therefore it is incredible and it shouldn't be taken seriously. Like, but what is, that line, how do you draw that line and how far are you willing to, to go? And as far as flat earth is concerned, uh, I know it's not, in a way it's not very realistic, but it is not really a conspiracy. It's the matter of people going outside and looking outside and seeing that you can see too far. And with the infrared stuff, it's, it's really, in a way it's game over, right? There's a, and Mark says that in the beginning of the, of the film. It does yeah. say that, but it's treated as some sort of without substance, not something that, they, for, for instance, he didn't focus on what Mark mentions. He says, well, I can see the island over there, I think. You know, it's like, I, look where how far we can see. They didn't pull a graphic and show the curvature and the expected curvature and, and the expected you know, you know, difference that you should see and what you actually see. They didn't do that there and then. And this is a problem with the whole thing is because people are going outside and, and making observations. And then they look at Scott Kelly, for instance, this wants to, to be here speaking for 44 seconds at the end for how long he speaks. And they show him doing a pirouette in, in his cables. And I mean, he's being ousted. Uh, the cables are out, you know, the, it's undeniable. So, What's going on here, and how how long is it going to take for people to to realize it? <laughs> if the ISS is proven to be a farce, you know, there's no, really nowhere else to go. You have to the whole thing is going to crumble, has to crumble. But you know, in this case, they they share some lines of 
reasoning or unreasoning with the New Yorker article. Uh, make make kind of statements and, and, and drive in a direction that, that tries to make people sound wacky. But I think in that regard, it kind of fails. If you have a critical sense of what the scientists or suppose scientists are saying, you 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 realize something is wrong because everything they're saying can be applied to their own preconceptions, right? The, that uh, the imposter was one thing is like the imposter syndrome, which is when you, you think you, you really don't know much about your what you study, which is probably the better thing to have because then it makes you look deeper into it. And they talk about this other thing, the, the syndrome, Kroger, Kruger, Dunsmore, whatever syndrome. Don't they all have that, not flat earthers? Yeah, but that, that syndrome, it seems to translate as arrogance. It's like somebody who you know study only so much and thinks they know everything. It's, it's like Mr. Know It All. There's a, you know, there's cultural terms for this kind of stuff. And somebody goes and makes some sort of psychological study and calls it something after themselves. It's the supreme, you know, arrogance as well to call some sort of syndrome, call it universal, and say that all humans have it. I mean, most people in anthropology find that uh, preposterous and, and kind of silly, actually, as a theory. So it, it proves that they don't really understand how you know, humans, uh, you know, work and behave in, in society and engage in societies. So. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so after looking at the film and finding out how much airtime um, the flat earthers have individually, and then the people who are coming against the flat earth, you you are going to you're going to do what you did to the movie First Man, and maybe people haven't seen what you've done to First Man. Can you explain? And where can people go and watch that? This is part of something I'm writing. So I'm writing on on space skepticism and space believers, and drawing on some of the conversations I had. Uh, Mark Sargent's conversation I, I've been transcribing, for instance, while on the plane as well, and some some of the other stuff that goes into technical points about space uh, and and things that people that space skeptics propose so i decided to analyze uh, that film and and so the basic structures basically i cut it apart and rearrange it and that film has a basic structure which is you know shows his family so neil's family life his wife then it has NASA stuff and and the trip to the moon and his training. And it has some cryptic uh, things going on there. His time in the quarantine. Um, it, is a, it is a strange film, but, but it is a film that really is what NASA is doing is basically a production company that supports through Hollywood productions of various kinds. It's, 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 Kind of fantasy it's like a theme park for adults but they don't know they're in a theme park it's kind of like that it's like the west world it's kind of, it's kind of like west world but uh and they are really like robots in a way i like that <laughs> idea those who are trapped within the globe model and are fighting against the flat earth not the people that are well i think probably everybody everyone's trapped in a theme park for adults or children yeah, yeah. good way to look at it sad yeah. Uh, and, and, NASA, it is, and NASA is just putting out movies without telling people that they're movies. And they're connected with Disney. Right, exactly. Yeah. So wow. you figure that out. It's a it's a formula that became really big with uh with um uh what do you call it? Reality shows, right? Reality shows are like that, but this this is kind of a reality show, but it's portrayed as reality. Yes, part of you know, some people say it's a kind of MK Ultra type of, of device that for population control at the highest levels, at the mass level of indoctrination. Right. Um, so that we do it being designed. And uh, I'd like to chime in just for a sec because you, you know, you've been counting up the minutes on who was on screen and who wasn't. And you got to acknowledge that it is no small feat for a very tiny running on shoestrings production team like Delta V to get 
one of the most high profile modern astronauts there is, Scott Kelly. Right. And it wasn't he wasn't even close. It was like, oh yeah, totally I'll do it. And he they said they only that what you saw was they used pretty much every second of him talking. They said they only had him for like five minutes, and all he was there for was to get that one line out, which was the first time I heard about flat earth, I think I was in space. It was brilliant. Right. It was that it was the only good piece of writing I've seen come out of NASA in the last year. So uh, I, I truly, when, wa when I watched it, knew that Scott Kelly um, hadn't come up with that line himself. That's what he was told to say, most likely. But do you know, Mark, or do you know, either of you know, whether or not he phoned that in, so to speak, sent the clip in, or went to meet no, up no, with no, the Delta they, V they people? They, they got him in a freaking set and mm -hmm. sat him down. And literally, they, only had, they said they only had him for just a few minutes. And so there's like, heck, let's, you know, well, you literally, they got, I think, I don't think they wasted a single second with the exception so, of hooking up the microphone. Why do you think that I have my own theory? They had him for only a few moments. Because you don't want to have someone like, <laughs> well, I mean, you, you can't have someone like him answer 30 minutes worth of questions. Of course not, because there's a very good chance he'll slip up. Yeah. Yeah. And, but and as they, a former astronaut, what does he do now? Yeah. The same thing uh, he did well, when he was been, a real astronaut, nothing. <laughs> well, I mean, now well, what happens is when you retire, when you retire from the ISS, you're usually a full bird colonel in, in the United States military. So and so he receives a, a, a healthy pension and then he can go on book tours and do whatever he mm -hmm. wants. In fact, I think he was on a book tour just in 2017 and one of our guys was following him around, you know, basically verbally assaulting him at every bookstore he could until finally his youtube channel was taken down and that guy disappeared we don't know what happened to him i feel bad well we are change orlando also um was uh interacted with him at a speech uh, asking yeah. him about the bubbles in space and he was totally caught off guard scott kelly and said that the bubbles in space were paint flecks when you consider how long the iss supposedly has been up there um, wouldn't have the paint flex come off by now? <laughs> Just but a ridiculous why, answer. You, you've got to, I mean, it's, it's no joke, you know, I, and I'm not being delusional when I say this. The fact that Scott Kelly accepted this role in this movie and has been, has been quoted on saying different things. I mean, and we'll talk about the National Geographic thing later. I mean, we're being trolled by some heavy hitters now. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. the, almost the heaviest of hitters, as a matter of fact. I mean, look, if you get a, a, a full blown astronaut, uh, you know, you know, Terry Verts that I, that I did the good morning London thing with Tim Peake, who has talked to other people, um, Scott Kelly and uh, I can't remember the other guy, well, Chris Hatfield. With Terry Verts, mm -hmm. you weren't really allowed on Good Morning Britain to fully interact with him either. The same no. way Scott Kelly only spoke for a few minutes. It's the same thing. They have a wall of protection around them. Yeah, I mean, so they the don't slip up. Yeah, the fact that Piers Morgan was the buffer for Terry Verts. I mean, flattering as it was, it was very difficult to do anything with Terry because you could tell that Piers wasn't going to have any of it. But still, they agree to get in the ring with us even if for a limited time just for a second or two yeah. so what does that mean that means they see we are a growing threat but they don't want to make a big deal about it but and they don't want to appear as if they're running from it but in a way we know they are right well the international press in this past week had uh, articles in many different countries talking about the cruise as a bunch of wackos trying to drive a cruise ship to Antarctica and to, uh, to the ice wall, to find the ice wall. Right. But they're talking about Robbie's uh, cruise. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're I not was, going to the ice wall. I, right I know. <laughs> I was pulled on, and that was straight because media uh, loves stealing from other media now, just verbatim. They'll just grab an article and say, oh, yeah, you know, they'll, they'll just replicate the article. That started out as a Guardian article, ironically enough, because the Guardian is in the middle of editing a documentary yeah. of their own on Flat Earth where they shot Roxanne Glenn and, uh, you know, the big UK tour that was over there. But they were, and so it, it filtered down to where a radio station in Kansas City called me and they said, Hey, we'd like to talk to you about that 2020 cruise to Antarctica. And I, I was going, Uh, you know, we're not actually going to Antarctica, it's leaving out of freaking Miami. Right. And, and they even thought, they even took it back. They said it was going to happen this year. I said, No, 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 no. The conference is in Dallas this year. 
It's it's not in it's not the cruise ship has been pushed off till next year. But they love the story because it's a it's like oh flat earthers aren't they going to find the edge when they're on this cruise boat? Could they you know could they sink flat Earth? Ha ha ha! Well, flat, Robbie, yeah. better let me know if uh, if it's not going to be a tropical cruise because I I can't bring the bikini. I need to bring some really warm polar clothes and yeah. boots and gloves. <laughs> there is there is no such thing as a Miami Antarctica trip. I, yeah, right? I know that of boat course. would take months. So, I there. mean, why is the media, well, we all know the media, A, doesn't fact check. We've all been guilty of that, but they don't fact check. But I also just think they purposely spin stories to suit an agenda. Make us they look do, nuts. Do it all the time. And they've always been doing this. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the in the video I, I made, it was a recent one on the, how the Apollo missions were covered in the newspapers. Um, you find that in Hong Kong, they were reporting on uh, astronauts, American astronauts hanging out with the Russians and looking at the Apollo uh, lunar landers and stuff, modules in 69 already. And that's during the, the Cold War. So the, the, and also the Vietnam War, you know, according to the guy who made uh, Capricorn One, the fact that the, the Amer Americans caught a big conspiracy with Nixon Watergate and Vietnam was kept under wraps and nobody saw Vietnam, nobody knew how terrible it was. Uh, it, it basically fueled this, uh, the, the idea that the moon landings and all these other things might actually be faked. It's easier to fake it because there's so, many, so much faking going on. So at the time, that's why he decided to do Capricorn 1 faking, faking lunar uh, landing, or uh, sorry, uh, Mars landing. Peter Himes. So with what you're doing with um, First Man, it's not out yet. You're still working on it. It's not on your channel. No. So what you're going to be doing with Behind the Curve has to wait for First Man to be completed first? No, no, no. I think this will be faster because I already have it all cut up. And it is a smaller film. It is easier film to, to kind of pick apart if I'm just going to focus on parts first. So focusing on the on the experts and exactly what they're saying, each of them, whether or not it debunks the evidence of flat earth. Because this is what, one of the things that they're doing here is that they avoid the details at all costs. If you're not gonna look at Mark's claims about you know pressure chambers and spacesuits underwater and all that other stuff, bubbles in space, they're not gonna be going through all this stuff in detail and saying this is part of why people stop believing space, right? Uh, they don't do that. They leave so many things untied and they give uh, pseudo explanations. It's like yeah. this guy, the, the, that Tim Urban guy, you know, his great insight is that people, people are going to flat earth because they're in a Disney movie as protagonists. That's, that's his great insight. And he claims science has no motive, as if scientists work for nothing. There's no funding involved, no agencies funding things that they want to, to fund for political reasons. Or well, kind, of kind of the world these people live in, they have to be extremely naive to, to believe that that's the case. They must know absolutely nothing about scientists or science. Or just the rest or of the world, politics. Everybody who was in that film, I would imagine, if they're halfway awake, has probably seen dirty dealings in politics. Why would they think science would be any different? Right. And uh, I mean, it's known to, to be very problematic in many, many ways. Uh, not all sorts of frauds. And of course, pharmaceutics, right? I'm hearing yeah. some sort of echo. Yeah, uh, we are. But, you know, you know, pharmaceutical companies in general, you know, you, you're able to pass a test. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I mean, that is considered science, but you're basically testing all kinds of chemicals in different animals and people and sometimes killing them and hurting them. And to make money is really not about keeping people healthy. And, and that's well known. It's not a conspiracy theory. Yes. So things that go, many things that go against the mainstream that are actually part and parcel of social science critiques uh, get written off as conspiracy theories as well. Very uh, true. Things that, that people discuss, you know, colonialism and uh, you know the coming, the building of America, for instance, how how did that, did that start, and how many peoples were there before? 
you know, that gets written off and you have uh, you know, Thanksgiving as a, you know, to, to just kind of gloss over yes. that, that part. It's like a, it's a many different Santa Clauses that they're hidden in closets and you have to let them out and kick them out of the house. <laughs> I like the way you put it and I totally agree. I'm sure everyone does. We'll continue with your breakdown of what you're doing with Behind the Curve. And you are you gonna make a video about this or is this going to be a paper? Yeah, I wanna, wanna make a video of it first. So I'll react to, to the, the many different things that they're seeing um, and show that in a way Scott Kelly is the one who has to explain himself for why he's hanging on wires. Um, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. It's, it's so funny, but um, that that's, that's it's part of the, the power of the information. You see, the, I saw this in Barcelona when I was in Barcelona uh, with Edu and Edu spoke for two hours to, to, to a packed house and people were, they were having a lot of fun with NASA, you know. Uh, and, and I, I think, I think there's a, has a lot of potential because you, once you see it, it's kind of over. You, right. You're able once to you laugh. see it, you can unsee it. And plus, Eero's presentations are very, um, they're they're fun in a way. When you're learning, you also are enjoying, not boring. Right. Right. He's he's yeah. He's he's quite funny and. People were just holding themselves laughing at some of the stuff that was going on because it gets to to the point. You know, I made a video about Chris Hadfield's TED talk. Part of it was about his TED talk and the kinds of scripts that they write for them are, you know, full of problems. Yeah. Essentially, They're not very well written because they're just written by people who write scripts. Right, without doing any research. I heard Chris Hatfield say that space has a smell and it smells like burning flesh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> he, he, okay, he said, who wrote they that? All kinds of stuff. They, they say all kinds of impossible things. Yeah, and contradict each other. And and some people, the people that don't see that, maybe they haven't watched a compilation, but or they rationalize it in some sort of really odd way. How can you? The darkness of space, right? Some see stars, some see the darkness of space. And then the, the ISS, some footage is what Ido showed. The older footage, none of it shows Aurora Borealis and other kinds of light phenomena. None of them in the 70s and 80s, and you put them all together one after the other. And then you get to 2015, suddenly you have Aurora Borealis, the lights from the cities. <laughs> I have the stars going behind the atmosphere and all, all in a really neat kind of very round turning kind of ball. Yeah, and, it's like uh, and, the blue marbles changed, the continent sizes have changed, the color right. of the earth's changed. Um, you know, what are they gonna write that off to? Global warming, um, global continent enlargement, I guess. Yeah, they, they say it's the angle of the satellite to where it's positioned. With, oh yeah. Whatever, blah, 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 they, they kind of try to explain that away. Um, what else? Yeah, they also, you know, they, they build up all this tension, especially when the experts are coming, because they, they start off a little bit slow and then it picks up towards the end and is all trying to focus in what Jaron is doing, the laser step test that everybody knows is going to fail in some sort of way. And they, they try to fit, they finish the film by trying to write the whole thing off with all that, the, the test that fail for, for, for different reasons. And in the beginning, uh, how she went into a website and did follow the planes and, and said, this is an easy test to perform. These guys, if Mark Sargent, at the beginning of what he was saying, he was completely wrong, everything must be is stupid therefore like you, you haven't you don't even have to look at it because there's I don't know how many clues but there are many of them and I mean they don't get into it comes Zach speaking and uh, it, it does come off well that's what I think actually about this film is that even with these experts they fail so miserably that the there's enough material on flat earth is to make it very kind of human and very approachable, if you know what I'm saying. Do you think though, because I'm too close to it and the film amused me and it was beautifully shot the first time I saw it. And then when I saw it the second time, I started getting angry. 
little mm. echo. I don't know where that's coming from. Sorry, everyone. I mean, um, do you think the average person who's not a flat earther, who isn't me or anybody who feels like I do, like Jared and Bob, et cetera, about this, um, will watch this and see the holes in it the way that you're pointing them out, Rodrigo? Will they be able to see them and realize that, that there's more to flat earth than these experts are telling us? Well, it's interesting because they're not even talking about a flat earth. They're basically trying to come up with some sort of theory about why people choose to have strange beliefs. And uh, it's really not about the evidence that people are looking at, not even balloon footage. And they also present this stuff from NASA with the right, right at the beginning. Uh, some of these rocket shots, if they have a guy saying the curvature can be seen clearly. And that is, you know, boom evidence and uh, <laughs> so they they think they take all the NASA stuff for granted as if it must be real and that that is necessary especially for this character Hannah Lore because for her as sort of a young person who made a career inside this this kind of world of NASA the animations that, that they believe in are data um, it's it's a whole world that falls apart so that that person would have the most resistance to this you know, of, of all people, especially as a young person who is, wants to go far in their career. Right? So they, it's the, their time to not screw up in terms of conforming to the establishment. And if you look at who's making money, these experts are the ones that have salaries and careers at stake if uh, their model, which it is, is wrong. But we flat earthers don't have, I mean, I don't have a career where I make money off YouTube. I do put some commercials. I mean, I think I get a hundred dollars a month or something. So I don't have a career based on the earth being flat. I don't sell merchandise. Some people do though, but still they were doing just fine before flat earth came along. This isn't a money making operation for anybody here, but the globe certainly is. So they've got a lot to lose. Yeah. I mean, I remember when Iru was looking at some of the launches of satellites that are being sold for hundreds of millions of dollars to different countries. And they were using the same animation, the same film for all the different launches with the same flares at the same time. <laughs> so the satellite companies are, as they say, making bank. They're selling it's air. 600 million dollars some of this <laughs> they're, stuff they're selling and, an empty box to these companies really well in peru this one that went up in peru is supposed to be some sort of weather satellite but it they think when it's supposed to have started working it was lagging and it was inaccurate and it wasn't any improvement from what they from what they had before so some people got pissed off it probably was what they had before whatever that was balloons. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, because they, they must have some sort of servers that are dedicated to, to doing the function of the satellites, or they must have uh, balloons that, that do that. So Yeah. So what else? What else you got with uh, the behind the curve and in any of the people who that you've analyzed, any of the quote characters? I like how you called some of the experts characters because they think we, the flat earthers, are the characters. But we're not. Yeah, they, she starts, for instance, Hannah Lore. She starts by saying, "Yeah, some people are still believe in this." So it's it's this. It's already leading the audience into this idea. Oh, this is so anachronistic. It's so out of time. This kind of belief. These people must be completely bonkers, right? It it already starts like that, and she says, "Oh, it is something." It's almost like she's out of words. She doesn't know what to go after. She she doesn't know how. She's not going to say, "Oh, there is no curvature. I can find the. I can measure it. I must yeah. go to NASA to see the curvature, and it's round. And but some people say it's pear shaped. Some people say it's it's oblate spheroid. But we see it as round. And the moon, you know, can come behind the Earth and and be very large or also very small. And <laughs> it's like if you look at NASA's assortment of uh, pictures supposedly from behind the moon showing the earth. They have a big moon, a small earth, and the other way around. And they claim that simply because of their optics. So they That's throw always, everything at you. Yeah, it's always a good get out of jail free card. It's uh, optics right. or it's perspective or it's, it's gravity. <laughs> yeah, and this stuff's like clearly just computer animations. Uh, she also goes, 
Yeah, she says this test is easy to perform. So the, these people are, and then, yeah, there's this whole tendency to treat flat earthers as children. Yes. As childlike. You have to, you know, they're scientifically illiterate. That's at the astrophysics convention thing in the bar. That right? convention in the bar and behind the curve where these you know, space junkies got together, I, I, I don't <laughs> believe that they have such an event. I believe that was set up for behind the curve. We do have flat earth meetups, but um, why would people who are interested in space meet up to discuss space at a bar? It, it's, it, that to me, this seems just bizarre. She tells a story that she was waiting for the stream from, from whatever it was, Cassini or some probe really far away all night and her dog looked at her and said, why have you the lights on? She was telling stories like that. Just imagine uh, that life waiting for a fantasy. Yeah, and they showed the stuff that they were looking at. It looks like CGI. I think it was from Enceladus, the moon of the moon of Jupiter. Yeah, it's sad. And they think we're the sad, pathetic ones. Right. Uh, well, they say she even says it's a little bit funny, innocuous, and uh, then it follows by saying that people are just easy to manipulate. So it, they are suffering from the. Dunning Kruger thing because they think you know they cannot be even if you're going to use that I think that's bad theory essentially I wouldn't use the term but they believe they are not able to be manipulated they, they could not have been misled in any way by astronomy the way it is constructed now which is it's quite a big it's quite a big deal for someone to come out and say you know look a lot of astronomy must be wrong and not know what to say, how to say what is to be, to remain from astronomy, what, what is to remain from astronomy. You know, it, there is, nobody has that answer. So it, it makes people very scared. And when they see that this edifice of a whole science with hundreds of years of people doing these observations, they, they cannot really get into how is it possible that, that some mistakes can generate so much information and when you, you remove these foundations, you know, what is it that's still standing? Those questions are, are daunting for, for, for scientists because they, they're going on the premise that a lot of things that they're, they're assuming are proven correct. So that, that work has been done, which is deconstructing the whole of astronomy and finding the mistakes. Um, so things like the that eclipse that has a sun and the moon and the sky at the same same time, selenium, 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 or whatever they call it. You cannot find an astronomy paper about this phenomenon. It appeared in, in 1666, and it was coined by some guy who observed it, which is the moon and the sun and the sky at the same time, and then an eclipse with a shadow that comes from the top of the moon down, which doesn't make any sense in the heliocentric model. And the, the, the explanation they give is that supposedly the atmosphere is making some sort of refraction that then generates that shadow from the top down, uh, but that hasn't been demonstrated. And the, the, it happened in our time recently, it's supposed to happen only hundreds of years at a time, uh, but it did happen and you can see it, but uh, there's, the astronomers are not talking about it, they don't write about it, I, I look into the, the databases that I have access to as an academic, and uh, I was surprised not to find anything. I thought I was going to find something, but I only found newspaper accounts of this phenomenon. Interesting. It was 1666. Yeah. Well, and it's wow. like the 6th of June or July as well. It's like some other six in it. Uh, but it's a French French guy who... I've been looking into astronomy as well, looking into how the, uh, I think it's fascinating to, to break apart how measure, to measure light years. So those are extreme distances. And, and still as a fraction of what they claim to, to be able to contact, like the Voyager probes, they're 13 billion miles away and they can, with technology from the 70s and they are still in touch with it, they can still talk to it. 
yeah. with the earth spinning and going around the sun every year and all, all the whole thing. Um, but uh, so they make claims like that. So if you believe it, it's possible, then anything is possible. And if it is possible, NASA is going to do it, you know, or Elon Musk is going to do it. A lot of people have that in their implanted in their minds somehow. Yeah, there are heroes, yeah. modern day heroes. NASA will save us. Mark always says they're the good guys. They wear white. Um, you know, and Elon Musk, you know, he's the guy who put the Tesla car into space, man. And, you know, I'm surprised people believe that. But most people who looked at it um, that I knew who believed in space and don't believe the Earth is not a globe, they saw that and thought it looked fake. But even when I pointed out all the aspects of it looking fake and how it was fake, they still had to go ahead and accept that it was real because you can't believe in, you can't believe the Tesla car is fake and believe that the earth is, excuse me, you can't believe the Tesla car is fake. And if, if so, it debunks everything when it comes to space travel. I don't know why I got confused there, but everyone <laughs> knows where I was going with that. Yeah, it, it put people in that uh, cognitive dissonance uh, area in their mind where they couldn't hold both beliefs at the same time. So they're like, it looks fake, but, but, but space travel's real. So I'm just going to ignore the whole Tesla car in space. Yeah, it's also a test for people to see how dumb people are not to realize that this is a waste of money, right? Throwing yes. money, money up in the air and for promotion uh, reasons. And also, you see how these companies like NASA and, and SpaceX, they get a free pass in terms of CO2 and things like that that, that people are pushing, right? They say that they get, they're going to help with climate change as well, but they you know, they're burning these rockets. They're super polluting. I mean, what kind of stuff comes out of those rockets? It's a lot of stuff. Good point. I never thought about that. Huh. Right? They're polluting the world like crazy. I mean, uh, NASA and its rockets. But they, they never, that's never mentioned. Well, Chris uh, Hatfield throws his underwear out of the ISS when it gets dirty and it burns up in the atmosphere. Right, yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> it's amazing. The the yeah, David Weiss always talks about this, uh, the bathroom at the ISS, right? right? Yeah. How it would actually practically work is some stuff flies around and- it's And it's so over, small. I mean, it's it's tiny and the, the men and women are both using the same facility and it, it requires suction to suck your bodily fluids out into this little- Right. The whole thing. The oh, fact they, that they- They drink their piss as well after- I, yeah, yeah, they recycle it, they say, yeah, or something supposedly, like that. Yeah, it's one of their stories. I mean, it's amazing. Whoever wrote the script, you know, it's... It's not even good enough for a straight-to-DVD movie. <laughs> hey, I have a... No, it's seriously not. The production value is... Oh, yeah, no, definitely. Bush League at best. Oh, yeah. Hey, I have a quick comment for you, um, because I just got an email back from one of the producers of Behind the Curve, Caroline Clark, mm -hmm. who said that... And, this, and I'm mentioning this to you, because this may help you. Mm -hmm. which is if you want the version, if you're going to edit something, the version with deleted scenes in it, you know, the scenes that nobody else has is only on iTunes. Mm -hmm. And it's not in the rental. You have to buy it. So you're going to spend the 15 bucks. So Mark, do you have that version? Do you I know do, what the I do not? Are? Uh, no, no, I don't have that version yet. <laughs> no, I, Wait, I, so, but I can go on iTunes right now and buy it if I wanted to. Yep. Yeah, you could. Why are you thinking? You thinking of little masochistic? Well, I don't want to know. I mean, if these <laughs> scenes weren't good enough for the film, well, the is, is oh, it, come on, what define good enough? Right, exactly. Oh. And deleted scenes really aren't things that weren't good enough for the film. How much larger? They're going to release them. They consider I, them good. I don't know. I they're not going to prove a uh, flat Earth. There aren't going to be flat Earth proving scenes. They're not going to be, you know, the many things I told them that had to do with proof and science and experiments that they didn't put into it because they cast my character in a certain role and they right. held true to what that was about me. You know, a woman in her fifties who loves cats and is, you know, people are always attacking her or whatever it is that they painted me like. Um, and they, they cast all of us as actual characters, taking aspects of who we really are, but amping them up and other things we showed them, other things we said that don't fit that mold, that character that they wanted us to have, they left on the cutting room floor. So I don't think any of that'll be in the deleted scenes hard to say but now we got to get a hold of that, that thing because i'll download it when we're they, done they, okay. they wanted to to play the most on a kind of romantic uh sort of innuendo between you two than on most of the other stuff and they have a yes. 
they have the whole scene with the guy that makes the models that, that kind of stands out on its own, it seems to be a little bit disconnected, even though I the, think it's nice. It is a nice scene, the Chris Pontius scene where he's building yeah. the 3D model. I like yeah. that scene a lot. Yeah. That's probably like a cool the best guy. part of it. You know, he, he's a down to earth guy. So yeah. He's a nice, definitely a nice guy. And I, I, I thought that was, it was cool that at least the documentary gave a lot of time to, even though it was edited in a way to, and it had wacky music and all that stuff, it still let the word out in, in some of the stuff that, that was being said and at the conference, I, th I thought it was, it was nice. Uh, I mean, of course it could have been way better. <laughs> I mean, but it could also, it thing. also could have been way worse. Uh, oh, you yeah. know, I try to describe it as, you know, what you said that it's, it's an approachable movie. You got to remember that, that uh, Patricia and I saw it in multiple venues and uh, I got a chance to see it with a whole bunch of different audiences and different film festivals. And what I noticed was it was very disarming to the people in that audience, meaning most of the 99% of the people that saw it at the festivals uh, were globalists and they almost all had questions. And so when there was a Q&A afterwards, oh, hands went up. There were some people, there was one theater I was in, almost nobody left. And once they knew, it's like, oh, yeah, we're going to do a Q&A after. It's like they were just glued to their seats because, again, you're engaged for 100 mm -hmm. minutes. And by the time you're done, it's like I kept seeing the same routine, which was, and Patricia remembers this from Toronto, which was, you know, like the first 20, 30 minutes, you could hear people laughing. You know, but it was the type of laughter. It's like, oh, flat earthers are ridiculous. Flat earthers are silly. And then all of a sudden about that 30 minute mark, all of a sudden that change. It's like, wait a minute. These people aren't kidding. This isn't this isn't this isn't a joke. And one of my, I think I told you one of my my favorite compliments was from a Hollywood guy who it secondhand. You remember this one, Patricia, uh, uh, a friend of Nick's, an editor who it was a total globalist and he showed it to him without any context at all. Watch mm -hmm. this. And the guy watches the entire movie at the end. He's going, man, he's going, where did you get the budget to, to hire all these people? He's going, what are you talking about? He goes, well, the actors, this is a, <laughs> this is a docu fiction, right? And, 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 and Nick looks at me, he goes, no, man, those were all real. He goes, that thing in Raleigh happened. And he goes, yeah, it happened. And he's going, oh. And I know I gotta, Mark's not making this up because I'm I heard making the this same up. story from the horse's mouth as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, so he ended up watching it again <laughs> just to be like, I got to see this again just to just to kind it's of real what it happened. But 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 I saw that with audiences as well, mm -hmm. which was they were almost all of a sudden it clicked in once they started seeing those mainstream clips like Jimmy Kimmel and uh, ESPN and Chris Pratt and and they're going, wait a minute. Did they hire these guys to to come on and and do these little cameos, or it, it, yeah. and then all all of a sudden just clicked? It's like wait, okay, Not and then they, fiction after all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and but yeah, the, in fact, when the conference finally rolled in, you know, when all that conference footage rolled in, which they were fairly kind when they showed the conference stuff, mm -hmm. uh, they the every audience was the same way. It was a spectacle at that point. They were going, this is a real thing. This is a real thing in my country right now, actually <laughs> happening right now. And so anyway, but it, it planted the seed and that's what I was happy about. And uh, again, it was no, it generated a huge amount of interest for the first movie. Again, it was, uh, there was a showing just showing tonight, as a matter of fact, in Chicago, uh, 22 film festivals in seven countries. I mean, we were in Moscow for three showings. It's amazing. Too bad we didn't get paid for this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know my uncle is still giving me grief. He's like, you signed away. What? And I go, what? I go, I want to get the word out. I that's go, why it? we all agreed. And yeah. that's why we all didn't research the filmmakers. That's why we all went into it with 100% trust. Because maybe you could say we were dumb or stupid. But, you know, we did it for the right reasons. And right. in the end, we hope that there will be some good that comes out of it. And if yeah. bad comes out of it, you know, what is the better thing to do? Never try or try? I say try. Right. Yeah, I think it, it hits, it tries to hit flat earth, but it's in ways that can be easily deconstructed. And if you're analyzing the, the arguments that they give, I mean, they have nothing to do with the shape of the earth, really, and the evidence that people take for, for granted there, right? That, or that people are looking into and compounding. Uh, and of course, they focus on the issue with Bob, right? Bob's 
uh, ring laser gyro. Right, right. The ring laser gyro experiment. And, yeah. and they catch, kind of, so they make it, they have this sneaky footage where they catch Bob outside. Yeah, singing. Bob forgets he's mic'd up. <laughs> oh, it's like, oh, that's brilliant. Bob's yeah. like, yeah, this is confidential. That we, so it makes Bob look sketchy, like he's trying to, you know, uh, but, but, explain away the, this, late, this, this procession. But, but he that, was only, I think, waiting to get more information so he could figure out what was happening before right. he was able to reveal it to people. But the way they cut that and edited it, it made it look like Bob was scheming and, and scamming. But by that time, it didn't, <laughs> yeah. it didn't matter because as everyone knows, and I think the director, because he was so used to the Flat Earth topic, he had forgotten too. And that is when you hit people with Flat Earth for the first time, there's a, you know, there's shock and awe. And by the time you get to that part in the movie, most people are just sitting there just just glossy eye going right what, what is yeah. happening seriously oh. when you get to the experiment and i've asked this many times i've even asked this to flat earthers when you get to uh -huh. jaren's experiment at the end where they try <laughs> to pull that little sneaky it's like oh dear jaren screwed up right you <laughs> ask them in the theater and and they all say the same thing it's like well something happened it was bad right because or they was it no, good they, they don't know there. some of they them don't no, know we know don't, yeah they don't know what the experiment was supposed to do in the first place so right. they they're like uh you know some people laughed but most people just had no no idea what was going on i mean when when, when patricia and i were in toronto we were mobbed <laughs> once they found out the director did something cute which was they announced that we were in the theater after the movie was over and and they were trying to do a press thing up front and nobody wanted to talk to them anymore they want to talk to Patricia and I. And so we're in the, literally in the middle of the theater in that little divider section. And it's like, get these people a mic. And finally, you know, they had to move us into the lobby and took us another hour to get out of there. And what crazy. were people asking? What kind of stuff were they curious about? All the, the same sort of questions How does everybody asks. What about gravity? Yeah. What about fill in the blank this? How mm -hmm. does blank work? You know, it's usually one of those two things, or of course, it's like so. You know, they're almost like wanted to touch us. Is this <laughs> like, real? Are you? Yeah. Real? So, are you? Are you actually? Is this a real thing? It's like, yeah, it's a totally real thing. There was one man who was angry that yes. uh, you and I would dare to be in such a thing. Yep. But that was, we didn't even know what that such a thing was going to look like until we watched it. You know, right. there in Canada, so we were shocked to see as as to how it turned out. It's not what we kind of signed up for, but you know, what are you going to do yep. once you put your mm -hmm. you know your voice and your your image and your actions in someone else's hands? They chop <laughs> it up and do what they will with it. So the guy was asking us why we would do such a thing, as if we. All, we all like sat around and scripted out our actions and you know now here's what we're gonna really mess flat earth up well, as if they didn't pick and choose to make you look crazy as possible right right but that yeah. man was angry he was the only one he was an audience member and he tried uh you know a little bit of um uh trying to ruffle our feathers and i was nice to him I tried to explain to him but you know when people have an opinion they you know you can't really argue with them because they'll be of the same uh, be of the same opinion still so you have to yeah, let it go I, I think this documentary brought a lot of attention to uh, that issue that's dealt with there that for instance patricia has been you know people calling her all kinds of different things and everybody essentially you have that list right mark that right. Yeah. huge list of different things you've been called over over the years and and i think it is that's one of the things that, that seems to be the bigger problem, but I don't think that that is exclusive to flat earth. This kind of cons no. conspiratorial mentality must be space believers also would some of them, at least uh, of the conspiratorial, more conspiratorial. How, how do you explain this? Is it a well, conspiratory mind? Or? I think it's just something that's in the ether these days with people to be this way, even not uh, involving flat earth. I was watching a live stream from a woman who gives advice about love and marriage it has absolutely nothing to do with flat earth. And, um, in the middle of this, she also does makeup tutorials, nothing to do with conspiracy or anything like that. And somebody was in her live chat and she doesn't ban or block anyone. She just allows anybody to say anything. And she trolls her trolls back and somebody was saying is this a transgender channel about her a woman i mean i've seen her children on the show that she does and her husband and uh asking if she's transgender and i was watching this and going wow <laughs> even in this you know woman's channel about uh health and makeup and home and love and family someone's calling her transgender so i think this is just 
the way our world is. It's not just on YouTube. It's everywhere where people will see others on TV, in the newspaper, on a talk show, or even here on YouTube and take out their own self-hate and angst and sense of ennui on that non-person who's there on the screen talking to them. I don't know why, but that's just how it is. I mean, it, we, the flat earth community is kind of feeding into it. You know, I remember, you know, at the end of most of my videos, I put question everything, you know, and I put that, in fact, the, the conference that I'm doing, you know, in Los Angeles called the question yes. everything conference. And I hate to say it, but that's what everybody's doing literally, which is question everything, even the stuff that you, I know we, you know, we all say we take things for granted. It's like, no, 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 nothing's taken for granted anymore. Everything's up for grabs and it's getting pretty nutty out there. It is, but in a way, it's good. So yeah, I, I yeah, yeah. I'm not. I, look, to I'm stop. not going to. Yeah, right. you have to. Yeah, that, that's that's the thing that that this is a kind of question that I've I've dealt with even in my anthropology work, which is how do you grow beyond your own mind and, and how you got to where you were. And for me, I I call this critical and creative reflexivity. It's basically looking at how you believe, what you believe, and why, and try to actually find holes in it and try to grow out of it. But it is something that most people are not going to be looking into or trying to do, which is what you're saying, essentially, in a more forceful way that when you say it like that, right, that, you know, question everything. You cannot question whether your mom loves you, right? It's like there, there's certain things like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's – But if so you it makes a lot of sense, but when, once you get into the details of how things work – yeah. Uh, you, you always you have to have some things you you have to believe about but then it seen. is a foundation and you know you have to poke even at those foundations my my, uh, my yeah yeah i agree uh the the thing is when you get into flat earth and we've seen this time and time and time again once you get into that if you can get your head around the whole flat earth concept then all of a sudden you're revisiting topics that had been gathering dust in your mind for a long time and so all of a sudden it becomes overwhelming what we've been seeing like with Owen Benjamin, for example, you know, kind of a light conspiracy guy. And then all of a sudden flat earth hits him and his mind is, it's like, it's being fueled by jet fuel. And he's like, Oh, there's so many things, you know, and now he's doing three and a half, four hour uh, rants, you know, podcasts on a regular mm -hmm. basis without any awkward gaps. He's just rolling and rolling and rolling. I'm honestly surprised he's just not passing out on camera. He's the best party guest ever. If you had him around, he'd entertain yeah. everyone. Well, you know, not just Owen Benjamin, but there's this channel, um, uh, Peter and Pete. Uh, yep. yeah, Peter and Pete, and they have been exploring all sorts of things. I think most know about their channel, but um, what about uh, water being polar? Uh, looking at the periodic table of elements. Uh, looking at uh, one of their videos is called. I'm reading it here off my phone, and you still think oxygen is in the air wrong so they are indeed questioning everything even what oxygen in the air is it's one of those things we'd all say well you know you can question everything people's genders people's motivations but you know we all know we breathe oxygen well you know they're saying no <laughs> we don't so there's nothing wrong with it there's nothing wrong with it when it comes to actually hurting people there's a line and it's up to the individual to decide where that line is and also you can hurt yourself yeah, what Mark just said uh, is what Alex, the flat earth man, told me and how it happened to him as well. So like you just mentioned with Owen Benjamin, that he's, he, he got really electrified by, by the issue and started looking and, and figuring out that it's not that easy. It's not as easy as people who are making claims in his, in his chat are saying. He knows it's not as easy as what oh, they're yeah. trying to write it off. So he... Who knows how far he's going to get to? He still claims he's a he's a, a glober, but he absolutely does not believe the lunar landings. And that's that's always the first step. And and that's yeah. just, I mean honestly, come on, that, that's that's a relation that's a relative relationship at that mm -hmm. point because once you're it's like okay, the lunar landing didn't happen. Okay, why? And then how far back do you pull? Right, and, and the only thing he could say is well, because it was a cold war and blah 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 Russia. He's not saying that, so therefore. Yeah. He's going, he's going flat. It's only a matter of time. Yeah. I still have people to this day who will say that, oh yeah. Okay. So the Apollo thing, that was a piece of trash, but you can't tell me that the space station 
is, is fake as well. It's like, come on, man. Come on. You know why not? You know, I mean, why, why would it be real? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's the, one of the first rules of crime. And that is, if you're going to, if you're going to commit one crime in that area, you might as well steal it all. Yeah, you it's know. like uh, relationships. If someone said they cheated once and they'll never cheat again, you better watch them. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah, they cheat once. Yeah, they're good. That, they keep cheating. The, I think that the the augmented reality stuff that they use can can be tricky, you know, for some people. Yeah. Uh, if they don't crack that, uh, if they if they're not shown that, then they might be, you know. I believe this stuff. And of course, it's a whole indoctrination of children. Right. Really children are playing the these games, these uh, augmented reality games. Right. But uh, I mean, the way NASA targets children, right, for the STEM, STEM program, science, technology, engineering, and math, yeah. uh, it's what they do. These guys, I think that Tyson and Bill Nye, they are the marketing persons, so say the propaganda boy for STEM. It's what they do. Makes Terms. sense. It, sure. they, they're there to raise money. They're fundraisers. Yes. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. Th there's no money in uh, Tyson debating people. He gets paid to go on, well, at least he did until recently, uh, going on stage from city to city and, you know, packing yeah. the arenas and, and basically, right. and I used to call him and this, I mean, well, it was a slight. I used to call him a, uh, um, a scientist jack in the box. You know, you just you just crank up the wheel. Dun, da, 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 da. You know, he pop up and say space is amazing, and that's it. Roll credits. And that's well, what he did. They're uh, Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey Circus. One's Barnum and one's Bailey, and they're right. they're you know the ringmasters of the circus, the greatest yeah. show on earth. At, at least Tyson has his PhD, whereas uh, uh, Bill Nye has, as you know, you know a bachelor's in mechanical, and yet here he is on a panel talking quantum physics. Here look is at their another... wardrobe, the vest that yeah. Neil wears, and the bow tie, and sometimes the lab coat that right. Bill Nye wears. These are central casting wardrobes. Oh yeah, right. yeah. yeah, they're fully, fully casted. But uh, how much does it cost to go see uh, Tyson? Uh, well, it used to cost about a hundred bucks a ticket, <laughs> give or take. Yeah, no, not kidding. And you know, the IQ of the room, I got to admit, was was pretty high. But uh, no, but you know, but now he can't because of you know it's uh, 20, 2018, The whole Me Too thing caught up with him as well, and so now he's off the circuit. He canceled all his dates. And it, more, it, more. It, did, it did get to him. Oh yeah, yeah. I knew that because I was supposed I was making a meetup for oh. uh, a flat Earth group in Florida because they were going to stage it outside of the theater that he was going to be performing at. And then all of a sudden they said, oh, yeah, cancel, you know, cancel the thing. We're going to do it a different a different location because Tyson pulled all his dates because of allegations. Wow. It's like, oh, great. That's fantastic. So. Show me where the globe touched you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. no, no surprise. The, yeah, so that what you're just saying is what what Sprout Alex, the Flat Earth Man, to start writing his music. It's it's really the that kind of feeling of the the creativity of the transformation, right? Finding all these new things out. Um, so that that is something that they, in a way, they don't focus on. They show Nathan Thompson as a kind of, what, brain athlete? Yes, he does brain training exercises. Uh, uh, memorizing the periodic table of elements while juggling hammers and all sorts of other things like that. He was here in my house juggling oranges from my kitchen while reciting things. And um, he's he has that kind of brain that can do those sorts of multitasking things better than any of us. It's pretty impressive, actually. But he is a he is definitely a character in real life. But they amped uh -huh. up his character aspect in behind the curve to make him. Yes, yeah, the way they observed. edited it. It's the way they edited it that it was a little bit leaning towards making him sound, you know, instead of a guy that was like full of life and, and wants to speak about this stuff, that he was just ranting, you know, off topic. Um, and driving and think, while reading a book. <laughs> but the thing is, like, wh wh what I'm pointing to is that this is an atypical flat earth, right? He's an atypical person, no matter what. Yes. We right? all know people so, that are that are atypical. Yeah, and he definitely is one. He stands out, you know. So in a way, like you may represent somebody 
in your same kind of age group or or women in the flat earth older women uh, represent you know in, in a way right you may be yeah. more representative of women in flat earth than nathan thompson is of of a normal of, of flat earth in general yes i uh, i agree yeah 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 so i'm just saying yeah they pick why did they why did they choose to to do that with him and without well, I mean, I think it was, it was okay. I think I, I could understand it. I actually ended up liking that part. But in the trailer, I thought that he was being portrayed as much wackier than he actually seemed to be. He seemed to be just somebody who was very bright. Right. Yes, indeed. And they made him appear in the trailer to be a guy who just walks up to random cars and says, the earth is flat. And he kind of does do that. But yet it's, yeah. it's within a wider context of other information sharing and flyers being handed out. Um, anyway, yeah, they yeah, people can be enthusiastic about all kinds of causes, right? Which is great. And people yeah. are going around doing that about other causes they believe in right now. Animal yeah. rights, gay rights. Um, yeah, you know, if he was whatever. doing this for science, and now, so they would think he's, he would, they would give him a prize. Yeah, they'd give him a, 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 a central casting costume to wear. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, how long do you think till you're done breaking this down and making a video about it? Hmm, I don't know. I was thinking of doing it this week, finishing it. Oh, really? Week. So it's going to um, come out yeah, soon? Yeah, I'm not going to. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it takes the, the, some of the videos that I've done. I'm, I'm trying to make them faster. Mm -hmm. But I also want to keep things, you know, without things that are uh, distracting, like mistakes that might be distracting, and try to illustrate them. So it, it's the kind of thing that you start working on it, and then you you really need to know where to stop and, and just say it's it's good enough, because otherwise it's it can really take a lot of time. Now is the time, though, because Behind the Curve's been released on, on yeah. various platforms. Also, uh, last night on Rob Skiba's show on TFR, Bob from Globusters, Jaren yeah. of Jaronism, myself and Mark it. Sargent, we all discussed uh, Behind the Curve, and that was also um, on Jaronism's channel for the first mm -hmm. hour and the second hour on Karen B's channel. So the yeah. community of Flat Earth has really been buzzing and talking about it again a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I watched I watch it, the, the two. I went into Karen B's channel as well, and I and I watched, and I wanted to to get some of the impressions from them and you guys uh, from there as well into it. Uh, but I want to first do the first video, which is based on these. I have it in front of me actually. Uh, Twenty minutes of raw material that includes, you know, Hannah Lor, the other guy, Tim Urban. Uh, the psychiatry guy, Joe Pierre, the Caltech physicist, Spiros guy. Um, they have a psychologist. They have a high school science teacher, which is kind of for the flat earth, it would be the you know, a gatekeeper in a way. This is a person, he, he makes, he actually claims that well, if I'm in a car and I throw a ball up, it's going to come back into my hand, right? But I mean, what about zero gravity planes? How does that work? Mm. Yeah. But of course, when they say these things and show these things, there is no answer. There's no person like you there, Rodrigo, to say something like that. And some of the audience won't think about it either. But the flat earthers will. We'll like be thinking it in our mind, like screaming right. it silently. <laughs> yeah. So I think I'm just going to tackle, you know, their experts because they could have. It's, it's interesting that they didn't try to do a better job at that or looking to the actual math and you not know, even you don't a, need to. a doesn't show up you know that's the most famous character in the whole you know, yeah story. and he might not ever have existed in real life right um, and yeah and his experiments can be done today and we can we can see that we can find that it shows flat it all depends upon the sun distance right. um this whole thing that behind the curve did is interesting and entertaining but even if we can poke holes in it, I think the average person has just been lulled into such a stupor that they just believe, they believe the experts, they believe the scientists, they will laugh at the appropriate places in the film. I saw it twice and, you know, I, the second time I saw it with an audience and that where they laughed is where the behind the curve filmmakers put the, built the laugh in. So I do hope it wakes some people up though. Because there are people out there who can see through brainwashing. We right. did. 
And, and I think it will, uh, and it'll generate other things. Uh, as you and I know, the National Geographic, for better or for worse, wouldn't have ever happened if they hadn't even watched the trailer for Behind the Curve because it wasn't out. And they watched the trailer and saw the u.gov survey and said, oh, yeah, we got to do something on this. And then they proceed, proceeded to make a hit piece on us. But that's National Geographic. They were going to. Mm, yeah, yeah I, I, th I think they really missed an opportunity to talk to to people like Bob and Jaron in more detail and to have that in there. They They're really trying did. to. They probably did. They had. It. I know they. Yeah, because I'm I know sure. they did with me. Right. And I didn't see that on screen, so I know the same must be for Bob and for Jaron and for Nathan and for Mark. Yeah, for I was example. I was mic'd up for days. Absolute right. days. And yeah, I could tell that some of the scenes seem to be very much you caught off guard or almost like you're after a long time and then you say something and they end up using that. Uh, some yeah. some things like that. Yeah. yeah. But Instead that's of, but that's also the same with just about not not to compare it to a reality television show, but that's what they do with reality television. Right. They they wait they wait for you to forget that your their microphone is on. <laughs> and and then it's like, oh yeah, then you're talking, oh yeah, I hate that such and such. That Mark Sargent, oops, is my mic on? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, they wait for some off the cuff type thing because a lot of the time they're the most genuine moments. And in this case, I don't, again, I, I know that Daniel is trying to go for more of the human touch, you know, no nuts and bolts, really just kind of looking at the mm -hmm. people. Here's, here's, you know, a pretty, I mean, I, I will say this, it wasn't almost honest look at 2017 in Flat Earth. You know, yeah. the, some of the people involved, what we did, you know, our opposition. And by the way, the one thing that really stuck out to me in that film was the opposition was never in the room at the same time with us. It was always off camera. The girl with the pink hair and the right. Caltech guy, they were always it's like, we're going to interview these guys because they would never be in the same room with us. You know, right. even that meetup that was right down the street. You didn't see any of those guys hanging out at the pizza place with us. I wonder you if ever they try to have that a debate or a conversation. Sure. Sure. And, Did and they, they tried. Just, I'm sorry, what? They tried it, the documentary makers. Uh well, yeah, they well, several people have tried. In fact, National Geographic tried. And all the the best they can do is get the it's like the scientist will say, I will be interviewed, not with them in the room. And that's it. I will I will address some questions, but I will not do it in a debate format. Uh, the, the, the Georgetown university, uh, physics guy was the perfect example where they had him, they, they said, he said, oh yeah, I'll totally do it. And then they said, okay, well, we make it easier for you. We will have Mark ask you the questions on video. We will send you the video and then you can take your time to respond to them. And he folded and he said, nope. Mm -hmm. After he got the questions, he's like, no, after he got the questions, after he got the questions, <laughs> right. he's like, nope. And there were only five of them. That was the worst part. Wow. Yeah. They were easy too. Easy, easy. Anyway, yeah, that's the thing. I think I think it if it gets people curious to go look a little bit more. To, like if people at least think there must be something else to this. It cannot be just this. Even though I think it does. If you pay attention to what you say, which I don't know if people are. This is the question, right? How much are they actually paying attention? Like I said in the beginning, when you say I can see too far here, that's game over. It's yeah. uh, uh, if they're alert at that time, you know, if that sticks, you know, that that as a kind of, you know, behind your ear kind of thing. And yeah. That, and they also itch behind your ear. Yeah. Everybody, including the scientists, they're in trouble, too. They know this, uh, which is like like in the average people, like you said, there's got to be more to this because otherwise I could snuff this thing out in an hour. It's like mm -hmm. you, you can get your mind to a state. It's like, oh, it's absolutely stupid, but you can't. You can get close. You can you can go down a rabbit hole. And it's like, yeah, I think I can, like me, I, I can turn flat earth into nothing in a matter of a day or two. And then you're like, a day or two later, you're going, why am I having problems with this? You know, you're it's like trying to put together, uh, you know, some assembly required. <laughs> and you see that, you know, on any sort of thing you're putting together when you get the package and go, no, I, I got this. And then hours later, you're going, why do the instructions not make any sense? And right. we just and, see it, it. And it's it's nice that that came across. You know, you're saying I tried to debunk this. Yeah, you know, but it was and... true. I tried for nine months. Nine months. Sat down. Would not make a video until I thought I had it. And then the worst thing in the world happened, which kind of like Owen Benjamin, where I got to the point. It's like, all right, 
I'm going the other way. I'm going to go on the other side and come back, reverse it and say, okay, I don't think it's a globe. Show me I'm wrong. And I honestly thought seriously, uh, Rodrigo, for the first three months, at least while I was just waiting for that phone call, waiting for that email for somebody to say, you're absolutely wrong. Here's why. And you can shut down your YouTube channel now. And yeah. here we are. Yeah. It's 29 I I remember when I discovered your clues in March of uh, 2015, it took me till August to actually create a channel. I didn't know what I was going to do with this new information, but I wanted to help in some way. Um, I kept waiting in the early stages. I was sharing videos on Twitter and on Facebook, but didn't have a channel. And getting the feedback from my Facebook friends who were unfriending and blocking me and mocking me, and some who were looking into Flat Earth too. And I kept waiting every day and scanning new videos for that one video to come out that officially RIP 100% debunked it so I could fold back into my comfortable matrix life and quit being a weirdo. But it hasn't come year after year after year. And it's never going to come. I know that now. Yeah. It, Mark, in the beginning, so when you put your first video out, you, you did you expect you know, science to really give you a smack right away and oh, yeah. wrong. I, I was hoping that somebody from, honestly, I was hoping from some guy from a, a community college with a master's degree in some sort of physical science, which is uh -huh. similar. It's like, okay, I appreciate what you're making here. Here's where you went wrong. You know, f you know a couple of little equations here, forgot to carry the two. That's it. There's nothing else to it. You can't refute it. And it was the exact opposite. I had people calling me, the, the few people from the community contacted me immediately. People were calling for interviews almost immediately because it was like a brand new concept they'd never heard of. It's like, Flat Earth, what is this new fad? It's like, what are you talking mm -hmm. about? It's been around forever. And then uh, and then the subject matter experts started coming out. And that's when uh -huh. I was in real trouble. When the military guys and the engineers and the pilots and all these other guys were coming out saying, you know what? You might be onto something because we don't use any of these formulas either or the valves or the seals man yes. oh yeah the valves the valves and the seals was brilliant and and to this day i still put that out there i can't wait you know till i sit down with an astronaut and i say tell me how your spacesuit works tell me how it protects against a vacuum oh don't tell yeah me. i was in our conversation you're talking about the helmets that they had that looked like motorcycle helmets I yeah found they were it. motorcycle yeah, helmets. <laughs> They wear motorcycle helmets. Yeah. They're kind of almost like a push button on the side. It yeah. kind of makes the visor go up and down. I, I honestly, and I didn't know, and I looked at those uh, pics, if you guys know what I'm talking about, where you see the picture, the, the images of the, the Challenger astronauts, and they're holding these helmets, yeah. and they're ridiculous. They're motorcycle helmets. And yeah. I'm going, oh, okay, well, they're doing that because the real helmets must be too bulky or whatever. And then all of a sudden, I see <laughs> a, a f the footage of them flying you know, in you know, the 80s, some 80s footage, and I'm looking, I'm going, that's the, they're using the same helmets. Apparently in the 80s, because there was no internet, not even close, we were so glossed over that they just did missions that didn't even try production value. I mean, and it's not just the helmets, sorry, not to go off on a little rant, the helmets didn't even connect to anything. It was helmets right. and then a bare neck and then like short sleeve shirts and no gloves and I'm going, what, why are you even wearing the helmet for? Why don't you just use a bike helmet? Oh and, God, and yeah. because again, they didn't have to try in the eighties. It was only when the internet started firing up that they had to put more money into this. I mean, they right. talk about the profit margin in the nineteen eighties for NASA. Oh, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but but yeah. now on the ISS, they do lots of things that many flat earthers catch. So they're still not trying that hard. In fact, perhaps they're soft revealing it to us, or there's just some dumb people who work there. I don't know. But you know, taking it back to behind the curve. They didn't really try hard enough with what they did, Rodrigo. They could have done a much better job at debunking flat Earth. Yes, yeah, they could have. They could have. They could have turned it into a complete hit piece. But at the same time, it's it's weird that the climate, the culture nowadays. You can't even if it's flat Earthers, you can't pick on any group like you used to be able to. You know, I don't care what demographic it is. Even flat Earth is not completely open. It's not open season on flat Earth. So mm -hmm. they'd love to tear into people, but then you'd have people in the audience like, oh, they shouldn't pick on flat Earthers. They're, you know, they seem like okay people. They're so they cute. had to, they had to kind of do a hands off thing <laughs> and, and be like, and, and the audience reacted to that. The audience went in and felt safe again, which was why they were talking to the subject matter experts. If it would have been nothing but flat Earthers for a hundred minutes, 
the audience would have been defensive. But every, I don't know, and Rodrigo can tell me more later, but, you know, every so many minutes, they'd throw in a normal, you know, somebody that wasn't a flat earther. It's like, okay, flat earth, flat earth, Scott Kelly, flat earth, flat earth, psychologist, mm -hmm. flat earth, flat yeah. earth, scientist. Yeah. And, and that accelerates towards the end. They start putting, bringing more and more and more. It's almost like a crescendo towards the the laser test. It really proves that that you you're just tripping, but you can't see it, right? It's right. like that's that's the message. If you if you pay attention, to what they're trying to do, as you said, some people get their mind goes goes different places, right? Oh yeah, they're yeah. Thinking about it, stuff. Well, a lot of people when they went in, because you don't know, the, the title and the movie posters don't give it away. When you go in, you don't know if it's a mockumentary or a docufiction or whatever. And so people have their expectations, uh -huh. but most people going in is like, well, it can't be real. <laughs> and, they, and we've done, you know, Hollywood has done some really professional uh, docufiction uh, pieces. The one director, I can't remember his name, who did uh, A Mighty Wind at Best in Show and, and, and movies like that. <laughs> where people played it absolutely straight. And so they're watching this and they're, and they're, and again, like that one guy is saying, thought that we were all actors, you know, just reading scripts and playing our part. And he's going, wow, that's great. This is great <laughs> stuff. It's like, no, no, not actors. Nope. Not one of them. Not a single actor, unless you count maybe Scott Kelly, which would be an actor, which mm -hmm. would be the irony. <laughs> it is. It's that the actors actually would have been, and I was sad that they didn't use, like, for example, they they hit those notes, which was like Neil deGrasse Tyson. They didn't get to interview him, but he was in it. Yeah. Uh, Bill Nye. They didn't get to interview yeah. him, but he was in it for. I mean, yeah. they there was a lot of content on screen at one point, yeah. a lot of content, which they just, you know, used with fair use, which was right. smart move. Uh, including Matt. Yeah. Including, devious. including devious, Matt. But smart move. But devious, though. But well, you mean the Matt part? You know, yeah, really. Yeah, look, he there. turned him. He turned but, him down. But that is what Matt was putting out on his public YouTube channel. So right, right, yeah, right, yeah. Right. I'm it's really surprised. Good. Honestly, I'm really surprised Matt hasn't. Really, and and I know we can say this on air. That's fine. Uh, I'm surprised he Matt has not responded to this. I, I that he wouldn't have gotten a copy and chopped it up and been you know. Well, he did. He said he was going to sue Rob Skiba. For some reason, yeah, I know. Robbie but, and me and you and we should be looking in our mailbox for those lawsuits and yeah, and still look. I should I go look now? Robbie Rob. can't come down from Canada anymore, <laughs> right? Rob Skiba, they, they, why why is he being sued? By uh, Matt says that Rob Skiba stole his curriculum, and we all stole his curriculum. And anytime <laughs> we use the words "quote flat Earth," we've stolen his curriculum. Yeah. And oh, and I got I got to say you know because I watch a lot of movies and I've absorbed a lot of media that making Matt the uh, antagonist in he this, made himself the antagonist. Well, what, but I mean it was it was an easy oh my god it fits so well because nobody else was bitter towards flat Earth it was like smiling saying things like well they're just miseducated you know right. uh, but but Matt screaming at the camera oh you know that's well, it made for a good watching, I guess. But, yeah. you know, I, I felt in some way, even if Matt has attacked me forever, I felt bad for him in a way. Not that he was misportrayed, if that's even a word. I, but I, that, didn't, uh, I don't know, that he was exposed as that he had demanded all money and all of this control in order to be in it. When all of us said, well, we'll do it. We'll, t we'll do it for the team. Any sympathy I had for Matt was lost when that last line of the demands was there. That oh yeah by the way you have to condemn Mark Sargent, <laughs> oh yeah as a as a Hollywood uh, Hollywood whatever I was supposed to be an agent working for Warner Brothers and the government at the same time why Warner Brothers by the way I know why would he single out Warner Brothers <laughs> anyway uh, who knows whatever <laughs> paranoid delusions mm. etc yeah it's Furrow interesting Brothers. because they edit the film they they have that guy Tim Urban saying that you guys are imagined or the flat earthers imagined themselves in a Disney movie but they cut this thing like a Disney movie they have the the antagonist who's really scary and this guy that screams conspiracy that's Matt yeah. and you're supposed to be like I guess the prince of flat earth or something right and and, and they the guys did, are set up as these kind of characters. And, and they did cartoon kid. drawings of Matt and Mark like a Disney film right. character. Right. Yeah, the animation so, was was surprising. In, it was <laughs> kind of a film for children kind of. in a way. But then again, we adults who haven't awakened yet, 
are like children mesmerized by media and right. you know that's why that's why the whole space deception and all the other deceptions work on people because we believe so easily yeah yeah well you know the old saying um uh grown-ups are just bigger kids yeah it's true do we really grow up i don't know <laughs> not me yeah, that's what they're saying that, that the reason why flat earth exists is, is scientific illiteracy and you, right. should, you shouldn't really you should look after them because they they went wrong you know they took the wrong turn somewhere right. and you need to help them so, so they they putting on you know this kind of pity this yeah course. poor flat earthers let's put our arms around them yeah. they're wounded yeah that's right yeah. that's kind of how they they're doing which is I mean, it could be much worse. It could be that you're, you know, that everybody's, it's a demeanor. It's going to bring society down. Yeah, they could say kill them and imprison them or imprison right. them and kill them. Yeah. And, then, and that is, by the way, what you said there about bringing society down. They didn't touch on it too much in, in behind the curve, but in the National Geographic thing, which was directly related to it, that's mm -hmm. exactly what they, was go they were going for. They and I don't know if you watched that clip yet, but they were. I've seen it. The one that that there's a blonde woman interviews yep, you yep, in a the, meetup. Yep, meet yep, yep. We did a meetup in our. Right. It was the same. Yeah, we met, meet up in Arcadia, California, yeah. followed by the Salt and Sea test. Uh, I didn't want to do the Salt and Sea test. In fact, the entire meetup and the test was built around National Geographic. They they orchestrated the entire thing. You know, they yeah. wanted it's like, look, we're going to be out there. Can you you know help us with these things? And I said, I don't want to. It's a terrible test. I don't want to do it. I don't want anything to do with this thing. That's the one that she looks into the camera and says, I can see clearly that he's going behind the curve. Right. And then it shows you, and you're like, uh, no. And yeah. It's yeah. And I uh, mean, we, we shot literally. I mean, we for three days. I mean, hours and hours and hours of footage. And that ten minutes was the weakest stuff they could possibly have grabbed. I mean, I, I alone sat down with her for a private 30 minute thing where she asked questions along right. the lines of, and she did it off camera again, you know, for, for the, for the groups, which was, she says that flat earth is dangerous, that flat earth <laughs> potentially will lead us into the new dark ages and that medicine will suffer. Technology will suffer and civilization <laughs> will crumble. I mean, she's throwing this stuff at me. I'm going, really? <laughs> I know that's that's pretty well, heavy. But. The way Who's medicine is today, stuff? the way medicine is today, um, the pharmaceutical industry that it is, it need, does need to crumble. So many aspects of society do need to crumble, and we're just the people to do it. Right, right, but but it's totally possible that uh, I mean I, I at least believe this that people can turn into a flat Earth uh, worldview. And everything else still remain, you know, under the government stump and and all kinds of other structures. But it's not that people realize this suddenly they're free from all these other structures that that have right. been built around us, right? That's true. It um, varies person to person, and, um, with the with the level I, of uh, letting go that they're willing to do to the. But you guys felt from the beginning that this was going to be a big thing. The transformation very drastic. Do, is that a question? It, yeah, when Flat Earth came along first, and you saw that it's not going to get debunked. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. the it wasn't it wasn't a slow burn by any stretch. Uh, I knew just by the sheer amount. Le there was um, a friend of mine, you know, uh, in the academic world, who said that when I had I think six interviews at that time, and and she's going, "Wow!" She goes, "You don't know in academia, they just they would kill." for to get any interviews on one of their topics or one of their publications and you're mm -hmm. getting it for this and then it started building and i remember how happy i was when forbes magazine just mentioned it in passing at the end of 2015. then bob did that song about neil tyson in the beginning of 2016 and 2016 just took off and then we thought it wouldn't get any weirder and then the beginning of 2017 kyrie irving came out and then 2017 was just, you know, uh, this roller coaster. And then 2018, I mean, now nowadays I can't keep track of all the, the channels, but did I think there was something special there in the beginning? Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because this is the only conspiracy or um, uh, 
people hate the word conspiracy. It's the only thing that makes you look at the world a little different that made me start a YouTube channel. There's all yeah. sorts of other things like 9-11, Sandy Hook, Boston bombing, uh, the medical industrial complex, um, veganism. All Well, that's a personal thing to me. But all of these things, mm -hmm. I said, very important to me, very interesting. I'm thinking about this. I'm talking about it with friends. No one's listening. But I never started a YouTube channel. Yeah. Flat Earth compelled me. Mm -hmm. That was that's a very good point because it was the same thing with me. I had a YouTube channel, but I didn't have any content on it. And I you know, it generates so much enthusiasm that people that were I'm not going to call them introverted, but they certainly weren't extroverted. You know, we're not going to put mm -hmm. themselves online. They were like they get they get filled with so much energy. It's like I'm going to sit down and make videos and put them out there. They may not use their real names and they may not even use their faces, but they're putting their content out there. And which is why our, you know, the the numbers were, you know, Patricia remembers, just skyrocketing until they told, score, told, tore the scoreboard down, where we went from 50,000 relevant search results to 20.9 million. And that's when the scoreboard broke, when they just, they said, all right, we're not Maybe tracking anybody's, right. anybody's yeah. videos anymore. <clears throat> YouTube. And then YouTube started uh, putting the real story from Wikipedia or Encyclopedia right. Britannica at uh, on on the oh, on okay. every video yeah. to yeah, debunk one, one it. Yeah, my videos had this. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that I looked at the people reacting at the reacting at the Apollo missions. It has a sort of Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia Britannica right. link to the Apollo. So mission. if right. this were nothing, if this were completely a ridiculous thing, flat Earth, they wouldn't be doing that. They and wouldn't be hiring, I mean, they wouldn't be sending in Scott Kelly to speak for however long he spoke, 30 seconds. Right. Oh, well, seconds. hell, yeah. the, the, there was, I mean, I'd like to say that, I, you know, I, I try not to think that I'm ever delusional, right? And I think, like, like, well, Flat Earth's not that big. And then all of a sudden I see Congress mention it during a congressional hearing about social media, how, mm -hmm. how they brought it up. And then I think, okay, well, it's not that big. And then all of a sudden, a Google employee who's talking about how the algorithms work in YouTube mentions out of all the topics he could mention, he says, well, if the average YouTuber watches 20 flat earth videos in a row. Yeah, where'd that come from? Yeah, where are we, what do you think we're going to recommend? I mean, you'd think they'd be saying cute cat videos or something that is more you know, right. common, but With, no flat earth. When that international mm -hmm. boxer goes on Logan Paul's show, and the one question, it's like, hey, out of all the conspiracies, what's your favorite flat earth or favorite conspiracy? All the conspiracies you could choose from. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm really into flat earth right now. <laughs> okay. You know, he's just this uh, champion boxer out of Mexico, young kid. And it's like, we just hear this time and time again where people are just bringing mm -hmm. it up. I mean, and you and I, you know, talking about it, there is no corner of the world that it can't get into because or age. there's no demographic there's target. no demographic it cannot get into if you are mm -hmm. into everybody knows this we all tell each other interesting stories there is no more interesting story than this if you're gonna bring it up to it's like mm -hmm. oh yeah I, I, I heard about a guy that was struck by lightning oh yeah you heard about flat earth yet <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah what? i was actually gonna get to that to that kind of point because i was wondering yeah once you realize how big this may be as a news for yeah. people who are living in the other paradigm. Uh, what is it that it's like this monster Eureka feeling that continues to be there? It's like, is it a feeling of awe? And is it, is it from realizing that you having, that you were deceived in trying to unravel all those threads? Cause that can take a lifetime after, after a lifetime of, of one position sudden change you know how many threads are you gonna unravel which i think is fascinating right it, it may be may, may give may have a lot of pleasure involved in this yeah there is and also pain there's both for each person it's different though what it makes them feel some people get very angry some people right. go into depression some people feel on top of the world and full of excitement it it all depends on the person and what their psychology is when they get into flat earth, where it takes them. For me, of course, I felt angry when I found out I'd been lied to, but I knew I was lied to about lots of other things before I got into flat earth. So it was like, I was mad and felt also angry that my parents and my grandparents went through their whole lives being lied to. And there was nothing I could do about it because my parents were dead by the time flat earth came to me. And then I felt 
that I needed to help other people. And I didn't know what I could do, but I had to do something. So that's why I have this channel. It's the thing I thought I could do. Um, find out and make a community by finding out about other flat earthers and what their awakening was like, which is what this channel is about. Although I do other things on the channel because I was alone and flat earth takes you from a place where you are connected to family and community. And then it kind of, you still are, but yet, unless you're lucky enough to have a spouse or a mate or a child or a coworker mm -hmm. or whatever, uh, that is into what you're into, you do have to walk alone. Yeah. And so just by having the channel where I could find out what, uh, you know, for example, Mark Sargent, how did he come to this belief? How did Jaron come to Bob, Karen B, mm -hmm. other people I interviewed, it made me feel I wasn't alone. So flat earth makes you angry, maybe depressed, lonely, but in the end, I think you're energized and excited and you want to be a part of waking up the world. Yeah. Because in the in behind the curve, they talk about losing friends, right? You're gonna be ostracized. It's almost like they're trying to fear the audience into don't go yes. there, you know, this is scary because you're going to lose all your family or your friends. But I, I know that that happens and that a lot of people have that issue. But haven't things been changing recently, especially the, the, the culture of meetups? Isn't that bringing a lot more people together? Isn't that catching up in a big way? Oh, yeah. You, you make new friends, you yeah. know? Yeah, it's, it's like um, uh, Kevin Bacon and Footloose, the greatest movie in the universe. That's an Avengers <laughs> reference, by the way, which is, uh, no, it is. I mean, he goes to the new school, right? It's that journey. He goes to the new school. He's alienated. He doesn't know what to do. And then slowly but surely, he makes all these friends. And by the end, he's he's king of the world. It's a dance party. <laughs> it's, a da it's, a, it's a dance party, a really bad redneck dance party. But, but it is like that, where the meetups have been increasing, increasing, increasing. And now, mm -hmm. I mean, the conferences this year are... I mean, I, I don't even I can't I don't even know them all. I mean, they're all over the place, and there's multiple ones in the United States, and there's Canada, and there's the UK, and Europe, Amsterdam, Amsterdam, and New Zealand. I mean, they're all over the freaking place, and those just the the countries that, that were speaking English. You know, there's it's happening everywhere. So, but to to get back to your point here, for me, it's never gotten old because I you know I have such a huge love for movies. And cinema, it's like the ultimate plot twist. It's it's mm -hmm. imagine every M Night Shyamalan movie combined mm -hmm. into one plot twist at the end, and to where you know you're watching a movie and you think you know where it's going because especially with Americans we know where it's going and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, you did not see that coming, <laughs> and then you're you're so blown away by it you want to tell people but you can't tell them out of context. They uh -huh. have to get to that point on their own. They've got to. They've got to go on that journey on their own. You can't just say, "Oh, by the way, it was the mother. She killed them all." <laughs> right? And no, you can't say that. You've got to say, "Okay, start here." And by the uh -huh. time you get there, maybe you know, and you don't know when they're going to figure it out. Uh, like I try to tell everybody, you know, I my the big thing for me now is just planting the seed and walking away, which is it's like, look, look into this. It'll be fine. Take a few breaths <laughs> and go. And then I leave. I mean, I've I've talked, I've tried to talk people out of talking to me about it. When people say, well, you know, what do you do? What are you into? It's like, oh man, you don't want to, you don't want to know what I'm into. <laughs> it's really, it's not for you. And and of course, that just fuels them even more because people, human beings, love a mystery. I love it. It's not for you. Flat Earth. It's not for you. It's not That's for a you, good no. one. No. Well, it's true. It's it's kind of like I, I bring it into the the flat Earth drug deal. Which is the same sort of thing. It's like, you know, you're really good drugs. It's like, no, I got something, but no, not for you, man. You're not ready for it. <laughs> you're not ready for it. You're 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 like this level. You need to be up here. You can't you can't take this right now. And they, you know, you do seriously. You just plant the seed. And I know every flat earther is the one consistent flaw of flat earth I have seen time and not the infighting, not anything else. It's the expectations where you want to turn somebody right in front of you like a vampire, <laughs> right? You want to turn them. You want to, you want to see the light in their eyes. Like that's why mm -hmm. the Owen Benjamin thing is caught fire because he did it literally on camera. He's like, uh, you know, he might as well be like, I'm freaking out, man. <laughs> you know, it, and you want yeah. to see that and you can't, you, you, you want to turn somebody. And so you're trying to hit them and they're not getting it. And you're trying to hit them and they're not getting it. No, it's the wrong thing. You, you, you hit them with it and you say, just, here's what you do. You know, look at this, look at this. 
everything's laid out for you. And then you walk away. And then two weeks later, after they have no sleep, they call you or they come back to you and their eyes, you know, they're dark circles and they come to you and they say, okay, man, I got like 12 to 120 questions, you know, and, and then they, you sit down with them and that's how it goes. Uh, but it's still enjoyable. And that's, that's why I do it every, every time it's, it's every day I get emails every day. I get phone calls. And have you have you had somebody close to you that were first, you know, say no, 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 and then changed somehow and came up to you and said, "Man, what about this? What about that?" Really curious about the really things. close to me, like a family member. Yeah, or a friend or a family member. Um, <clears throat> most of the people that find me have already gone on that journey on their own. Uh, the, the, most of the people that come to me and and that have the questions, they're acquaintances at best. I'm working on some family. I know where I stand with pretty much every family member. My sister, she can, you can tell that the more mainstream media is hitting, she, the more stuff she finds accidentally about this reinforces it. When all of a sudden somebody makes a Facebook post or somebody does this and I'm waiting for the day where somebody says, blah, blah, blah. And then mm -hmm. she says, oh, you know, oh, my brother's into it. Like, and you know, like the name, come, my name comes up in passing. It's like, oh, you know him? You know, that's what I'm waiting for, because then she'd be like, oh, God. So <laughs> like she hasn't seen she hasn't seen the documentary yet. And mm -hmm. I'm hoping that she does one day, but she refused. She knows it's out there. She won't watch it. So I'm hoping that like one of her mm -hmm. friends springs it on her. But My why, why is, it, is it too cringe? It. it would be, be cringe worthy for her. She's she she's going to get mad at you. If she Maybe watches. like like, for example, she saw here if for example, she saw <laughs> she was in the living room when Patricia's CBS piece came on for uh, CBS Sunday morning. And and she was sitting there with her husband. And she's like, and, I, and oh. I've met her and her husband in person. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so she's like, Oh, God, <laughs> she's like, and, and, and what she was holding her breath for was she was going, Mark's not in this, right. And like, she was hoping that it wouldn't go like from you straight to me. And even though, if, ironically enough, we were literally like within 20 feet of each other when that right. thing was shot. Uh, and so, yeah, that's what I'm waiting for. Everybody else, I think I've got a pretty good, you know, I know where they are. My uh, brother and sister have not seen Behind the Curve. My brother saw the CBS piece. He messaged me and he said, Jane Polly? Question mark. That's what he said, because Jane Polly is the one who introduces the CBS piece. It's on my channel if yeah. you haven't seen it. It's been taken off YouTube, but the little excerpt is still on my channel, not the whole video. But um, I don't think my sister has seen any of that. They know, I'm a, they know what I do, and they don't think I'm crazy. They just don't care somehow. But I have found that I've sown seeds and that people who I don't know personally, but that are Facebook friends, have either unfriended, blocked, made some nasty comment, and then later come back and said, I looked into it, I'm sorry. And then I see them posting up a storm. Or funnier yet, people who have unfriended me and told me I was nuts back in 2015 or 2016, they never refriended me, but I see them posting on somebody else's post about Flat Earth. They forgot that I might have been one of the first people that they heard it from and they were nasty to me, but they just, you know, you know how it is. I mean, no one wants thanks for waking right. someone up. You just throw a lot of seeds out and then eventually something's going to grow. And we don't know who threw the seeds out, but some it's of those names I remember. It, it's, it's just funny how he seems to hit uh, in waves, right? There's like wave one, and wave two, and he seems to be getting stronger and stronger in every one of these kind of wave yeah. movements. Yeah. Like, for example, I didn't think that 2019 was going to start so quickly with the Owen Benjamin thing. Because uh -huh. it's like, well, I mean, Kyrie Irving, how are we going to top that? And then, you know, the documentary came out and the, the major network pieces were coming out in 2018. And now, you know, here we are starting up again. And with all the conferences internationally, uh, it's going to take a whole new uh, form, I think. And, and of course, Owen Benjamin, it's a perfect kind of character to, to, guess, to get the word out because he's so outspoken. No. And he's on fire all the time, and he's singing, and he can make up these lyrics. I mean, I saw the other night he he, he was talking about how Sandra Bullock uses the screen that's made out of aborted fetuses or penises oh, no. from babies, and oh, she uses no. in her face. And then he <laughs> he sings a song, you know that da da dee da 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 pa 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 da pa pa. No, that song is like oh, it was oh like, yeah 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 it was like. Uh, 
baby penises. Baby oh, penises. Mad World. Mad Crazy. World. There you go. Years, for yeah, two, he, years did it, and someone else. I can't think of his name. Yeah. Yeah, but he it's it, a comedian, right? He's gonna talk about it in may improvise many, many different thoughts on top of this, and that just multiplies the interest, especially because he really. It's taking, you know, he he likes banning people in his channel. <laughs> Ban for life. He loves it. Like Ban for life. And uh, he's doing it to people who are, are just trying to come after Flat Earth as something stupid. So, right. Um, and of course, he who knows when he's going to turn. And but he doesn't have a really good reason to hang on to the globe so far. But he re at least, like you said, he realized that NASA is is deceptive. And I think what really caught to his mind, what really made sense was the numbers of the globe. You know, all the six, 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 six is for the speeds uh, of the the sun and and uh, the Earth around the sun. Right. All those sixes and the tilt of the Earth. That for some reason that resonated with him. Right. Yeah, it's impossible that those would be the numbers unless somebody planned this out, and someone and, did. Many someone's. And and he's slipped too many times. He's mentioned Antarctica too many details. Flat Earth details about Antarctica too many details. He's got to know. He knows. Oh, yeah, he knows. But again, like how many people have we seen this to? It's like he can't. In fact, Rob Skiba put it perfectly. He goes, he sounds like me during his mm -hmm. Rob Skiba's first year, yes, which is mm -hmm. Rob was holding on just in case everything went south. And it's like, well, yeah, OK, I can understand Rob in 2015, but not now. You know, not, not, I mean, Owen should know. It's like, look, we've been doing this for a while. Rob didn't want to be a flat earth person. <laughs> Same nope. as Owen says now. No, nope. didn't yeah, want to Rob, be. Yeah, Rob said that he was very, it was very difficult for him because he lost lots of it, most of his sales yeah. from the backlash of coming out of the information. But that changed and now he's doing better. But yeah, but in the beginning, it was quite a big move to come out. And like with anybody, I, I hate to bring up this one again, but I, I have to because it, it it I think it strikes home, which is before Alex Jones got into trouble and before he was banned from certain things, his uh -huh. producers called and said, hey, can we do how long? Literally, that was the opening line. How long can we do a flat earth show without actually saying the words flat earth? And I said, you got 10 minutes, maybe if you if you dance around a little bit. And they said, yeah, we can't take that chance. That because of the backlash, it was the words that were used. It was like, we're afraid of what might what our subscribers might do if all of a sudden they thought we went off the rails, which is amazing considering that we're, we're talking about here. We're talking about a guy who yells in the camera about just about everything conspiracy <laughs> That's right. you could ever Video want. Off the wall. Af oh, yeah. I mean, and really exaggerated. I mean, yeah. you know, complete character that he plays. And right. Yet flat Earth, that's how polarizing it is. It it's very people. interesting because they're they're afraid of their audience, but they also want to approach you at the same time. So they recognize how big this is getting. Right. So they have their meters, right? They've been asking people, and they they they're seeing the wave coming. So yeah, yeah. Uh, something either something big is going to happen this year, or, or I think it's a big turnaround year because it's barely started and. And this whole moon stuff is out and it's, you know, the, the thing that scared science and you can look up the articles on this, the thing that scared science the most last year was uh -huh. the U dot, the U gov survey scared them to no end because they're all about numbers. They're all about stats. Yeah. And I am yeah. too. I love the stats. And so when they saw that stat <laughs> of the 18 to 24 year olds, they was yeah. like, okay, all the other numbers we can kind of get 2%, 3%, 5%. We get that. But all of a sudden, mm -hmm. you're telling me that 34 percent of 18 to 24 year olds aren't buying the globe anymore. That's a right. big. I mean, that's you know. I mean, that's way outside of the too DVD. fast, too fast for the education system. Yeah, to yeah. To where there were major science publications coming out against their own, saying you did it wrong. Basically, you know, going straight after u.gov, one of their own guys, you know, their own teams. <laughs> and they're saying, no, 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 you did that that survey completely wrong. You, you uh -huh. The numbers aren't what you say. It's like, it's like, look, we did the numbers. <laughs> it's like we called up 10,000 Americans. We weren't even calling them up in the UK. We were calling the Americans. You know, mm -hmm. and, and so why would we have one to single that? And of course, the 18 to 24, because they're more open to it. They, they're like, uh, because they watch a lot more social media. They've been absorbing it now for the last few years, and all of a sudden it's like, yeah, you know what? I'm undecided. 
that's not the answer they wanted. And it and it freaked them out. So science is because- fighting back, though. Science is fighting back. They uh, have a couple oh, yeah. of stories that came out. Forbes magazine uh, two days ago came out with a story called Two Meteorites Hit the Super Blood Wolf Moon. Oh, so yeah, that. To push that. And then in yeah. uh, Astronomy magazine, Impact on the Moon During the Total Lunar Eclipse. And, you know, they say there was a flash and, you know, that kind of thing. But, you know, let's see the new crater because the moons look the same forever, right? Right. And there would have to be a new crater if indeed that occurred. It's just more space programming. But all of, uh, you know, the top media and, you know, Forbes and et cetera, et cetera, are coming out with these stories as if they are true, just trying to put people back into a comfortable stupor again. Well, you yeah, want I, I follow ESA as well and NASA and ESA. Every day, ESA is putting two, three films or videos, little videos per day out. Uh, and I mean, they're ripe for analysis because they repeat themselves so much. It's, uh, and this is part of how you, it's another way to unweave the whole deception. Uh, the way they speak, uh, NASA officials when they're doing their, their presentations, not a lot of people have, have, have done that. I mean, we make fun of it, but uh, you can really uh, find this master script that's behind it. You know, they, the way they repeat themselves, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. And they, a- they, they're just desperate with it, trying to, to make as much material as possible to keep their thing going. I used to joke that uh, NASA would release space. I, I call them space beat stories, like a drum beat. You know, and that is okay. You're on a globe. You're on a globe. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter if you even read the article, as long as you glance at the title and maybe look at the image. The, the image is the most important thing. And it used to be okay. There's a face on Mars. You're on a globe. Saturn globe. We're reclassifying Pluto globe. A probe went somewhere doing something. We don't care. It's on a globe. And uh-huh. those used to be only every several several months. And mm-hmm. then it started doing it more frequently to where now mm-hmm. it's at least several times a week, if not daily, to where, again, it, they, they have to. It's like, okay, the, our answer is just to flood this thing. But that doesn't really help either. Because if you're not buying it, or it's what probably what it's going to do is, is it's jog worse. the memory of somebody else. Somebody that, you know, it's already a flat earther or already into this is like, Oh yeah, this piece of trash. Yeah. Hey, by the way, Fred, I got to, you know, let me tell you something about something. It reminds people. It reminds me all the time. Every time I see a space story, it just it's like, "Oh, you guys are killing me." And they're terrible. They're not good stories. I mean, most of the time it's that near future thing, which is like, "Oh, we're going to thank God Elon Musk hasn't been doing anything for the last couple months." <laughs> Which is, oh, we're going to colonize Mars. Oh, here's what the new flying cars are going to look like. They're going to, you know, we're going to go to the moon. Oh, we're still, and and the compilation which came out last year, which I love, which is every president since Reagan saying Uh the same thing, which is they're dedicating themselves to going back to the moon. You know, Reagan and Bush and Clinton and the other Bush. Yeah, they all say the same things, like a ritual. They have to say it and get the morale up. Yeah, we're we're going to the moon and then nobody goes. It's money to science. It's always what it is. It's like their motivator, right? They they go out, make these statements, and it's budget that goes into a place, and that's their free of motive science. Yeah. We'll be free. Why aren't people getting <laughs> angry though? Because we are observing this. We're observing the stories about meteors in the shape of Santa Claus or whatever, and uh, oh, you know, asteroids going to hit us, and yeah. all this other crazy stuff. Plus, what we've discussed. Why aren't people realizing that they've been saying we're going back to the moon for decades, but we never do? Why aren't people up in arms about this? I think it's all the distractions yes. with other things that they put into play. Uh, that it, you know, we've got these cell phones now, and we can just look down at what's in our hand and play mindless games, and you know, chat with each other and sext each other, and just the you know, what colors the dress or Yanni or Laurel or whatever that was that came out. They're just bombarding us with the stupidity all of the time. So we right. never do anything other than what you said, Mark. You know. See the story, you live on a globe. See the story, you live on a globe. It's, yeah, you don't you don't have to think about it. You don't it. have time. The, the, think- the junk food media, which is what I call it, it's so thick now. I mean, we've gotten really good at that. I will say this about our civilization. Between, you know, the television channels and YouTube and straight up movies and, and, and all the games, there's no way you can even cover a small fraction of what, all everything that's out there. So the real, well, the fake science stories just get lost in the shuffle. 
So, oh yeah, it's just a subtle, subtle reminder. They don't care if you even look at the space story once every two or three weeks. You know, if it's only a few times a year, it's like, oh yeah, there's a picture of a planet. Uh, oh, anyway, back to Fortnite. You know, they're, <laughs> they're doing whatever it is. They, they, it's, it's a single beat that has been very, very effective over the years. But as of recently, a lot of people haven't been buying it, uh, and mostly because, the, again, the moon missions. I will say this has have gotten dated, so dated. It's not not just unrealistic, dated. To where, remember when you and I visited the uh, the Saturn V rocket down in Houston? I mean, that's beyond like classic car age in in some cases. I mean, it was that particular one. I think was from the late sixties, and it's like oh, look that remember the physicist that was with Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know, one of the young physicists, and she goes, "Yeah, that moon mission stuff." She goes, "That was a thing." <laughs> That was a thing. Right? That was a thing. And and he goes, what? It's still a thing. He goes, really? She goes, really? Do it again. Right? She goes, I mean, we're two generations away now. That's why nobody's buying it anymore. And why are people buying the fact that they recorded over the telemetry uh, data recordings? People, Why are people right. buying that? Um, right. Or that they can't figure out through taking the lunar module whatever they've got and tearing it apart we'd be cool america would be fine with that sure if they were able to get the technology back that they had before in the 60s yeah yeah when i when i was a, as a kid when i went to disney world uh of course you already get to take it to cape canaveral so i saw you know astronauts right. eating chicken nuggets uh and it's fast part food of the, and fast food news yeah, there yeah. you go of course yeah. And it's it's the kind of package that they had in mind for a long time for this kind of design of a population way way of thinking. Yeah. It, it worked. It worked really, really well for a long time. But now I, it's something that I kind of I didn't predict, but I've, I've been kind of it's the the goggles have been taken off my eyes, which was now the technology, the detection technology that we have is caught up which is the limit, you remember, the future that we never had. Where are flying cars and, and robot mm -hmm. servants and all this stuff? We don't have any of that. But the limited amount of technology that we have, mostly social media, interconnectivity, that's caught up to where now the average person has access to things they never would have had even 30 years ago. And now people, because they're comparing notes and pic, uh, you know pictures worth a thousand words, now we can share all these ideas. And, it's, mm -hmm. and that has caught up with them either you know deliberately or not deliberately right and yeah, this they, is not what this is what's not going away this is part of the wave that keeps on flowing right mm -hmm. right keeps on growing <clears throat> and some people are scared that there might be a you know off switch or something yeah. of the kind may a happen. reset a reset yeah. uh, but i mean i think you can expect uh all kinds of deviations like what kind all kinds of tangents that people explore in the in this in the community itself once the uh, once the flat earth is out right everybody can run any direction they want and i think that also we're going to see the rise of a kind of flat earth fiction right yes oh it yeah it has to happen uh, yeah i mean it's already kind of started but but yeah once once that stamp is there everybody's like oh a whole new reality to to write about because up until now Mm -hmm. Again, no accident. There have not been any flat Earth shows, no flat Earth movies, mm -hmm. uh, very, very few flat Earth books in any sort of fictional capacity. Well, uh, the fantasy books, you know, Tolkien's books, it's a flat Earth. You're right. It is. It is yeah. a flat Earth. We've been looking at it. My my partner Louisa, she she read the Silmarillion or parts of it. Oh, the Samarillion. Kind of, yeah. yeah, yeah. The kind of the cosmology of the whole thing, and I think it is. It's got all these. Who knows how much he knew and what he's putting in Yeah, there. yeah, he was an interesting guy. Yeah, very, very, very. He, I think he was one of the anointed ones, I guess. We visited. We visited his his. Um, there's a, a exhibition in Oxford in a library there that shows all his personal things and some of the many drawings he made for the Hobbit and for different books. Nice. And he used to write letters from the North Pole as Santa to his children and he faked the stamps. So he drew these little stamps of the North Pole and it 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 would give you a kind of Mount Meru feeling sort of thing. Neat. Going on there. It's very weird, but he he drew the the 
the stamps by hand to fool his kids that he was actually coming from the North Pole. But nice. his North Pole is kind of flat earthish. is is a magical North Pole. It's a Tree of Life style cosmology, you know, which cool. is kind of also this is what, this is the most interesting part of, of flat Earth, I think, for me is the how people are learning to think and teaching each other how to think in this in a way that was an ancient way of thinking yeah, um, yeah. an indigenous way of thinking so and this this has not happened before in such a big way no no it hasn't it's it's really unique and again just humble to be a part of it <clears throat> the toothpaste is out of the tube there's no way to put it back flat earth is here to stay we don't know where it's going to go and there's going to be ways it goes that we don't like and and other times we're going to have our victories but more and more people are coming on board and with more and more people will be we are going to get wherever it is we're going faster and and i hear you know, that some big names are coming out or something <clears throat> there'll be a, a string of people coming out this year I hear that all the time and then we hear who they are and you're like, eh, mm. we'll see. I mean, <laughs> it, it's possible. It's not going to take too much more to do it. Uh, you know, do we need a, big names? I mean, do we need Oprah to come out as a flat earther to make it legit? We know that no, it'll happen. No, we don't. We it's don't legit actually. with just us here, you know? It, it's, it makes it more fun if, if bigger mm -hmm. names because it gives the media a target, a big uh -huh. target to go after. Uh, you know, with Kyrie, it was easy. Uh, you know, uh, Roseanne, would love to have her on board, but unfortunately she's gotten herself in a little trouble, so we can't use her at the moment. And the recent guy who came out, uh, I don't know sports, you tell me the guy's name, but uh, they, who uh, came out and said flat earth, and uh, he was probably pulled back by people telling him he's got contracts and, um, Stephen me, Curry. The, Stephen the Curry, yeah, uh, Stephen we're gonna Curry from hook State. you up with um, uh, Scott Kelly, and he's gonna teach you the ways of the world, son. Right. Yeah, he, he came been, he right barely, back in the fold. Yeah, that. he barely got out there 48 hours before yes. they started reeling him back in. So that's why celebs aren't necessary. I mean, in a way, it is good when a celeb comes out because their audience will be exposed to something they may never heard of before. But yet when they when that celeb is forced to renege, uh, to step back, to say, oh, it's just joking. Right. Was the last uh, was it that tennis uh, Djokovic? Isn't he a, a flat earther? Yeah, I think he's not pulled back out of it. He's he's given subtle flat earth hints in art. I think. Right. I don't. I don't have a list of all all the athletes and celebrities of, of various levels. And of course, you know, there's ones we can't talk about. But I can I, I think you know a marketer, somebody in marketing, is going to find out that they can make money out of this. Exactly. Well, that's what. Somebody. Again, that and we've seen that already where it lasts in 2017, you know, the first of the producers started coming out. I mean, look, the, the, the documentary wasn't made necessarily for our benefit. In 2016, was, there was that guy, Robert Kiviat, who contacted right? just you and just me to do something. Right. I don't know what it was, but then he got angry because something Matt Powerland did. did no, 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 remember? it was Eric. It was Eric. Okay. Eric, Eric killed, Eric killed the, uh, the Netflix meeting. Uh, because again, back then, before now, you know, mm -hmm. now it's it's there's so many people in it. They they ref the, the intern literally referenced uh, Eric and his anti-Semitic views in like all of thirty <laughs> seconds. So that was it. It's like, nope, sorry. But like true tele true television uh, looked into it in twenty fifteen. Yeah, I have. There's so many of them. I get them all confused. Yeah. As to who we've talked to and the amount of um, what they call screen tests, where they just have you talk oh, about flat Lord, earth yes. and record it on Skype and give it to them. Not to be famous, not to do. It's nothing like that. It's like so that somebody is going to get flat earth and put it in a bigger platform that all the world will look at. That's right. why we've all thought maybe that'll happen someday, and we've tried. But you know. We're It'll, doing just fine here on YouTube. We really it, are. We're we're it, doing amazingly. It will happen though, just just for the fact that it, there's some producers going to all of a sudden it's going to click. You know, some high level producer that'll say, "Wait a minute, this is such an old concept. Everybody will get it. It's such a simple concept. Everybody will get it. Why haven't we not? Why haven't we done this people yet?" People are afraid because of the sponsors. Look, a lot of TV comes on satellite to people's mm. houses. How's that going to be explained? <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, actually, uh, I don't want to get into it right now. That's a whole other discussion. Yeah. But anyway, we'll we'll get there. I mean, it's, you know, every day I don't think it's, you know, I think, oh, okay, we're going to simmer down. Nope. Nope. Just keeps getting weirder. I mean, who was John Sally came out today on that two million 
sub channel just earlier in the today defending um stephen curry and he's a hall of famer cool that's so. cool yeah there's more to come there's more channels that are quite large that are looking into conspiracies that are going to be coming out shortly or so i've heard yeah. and uh more celebs coming out and, oh, and officially uh, don't forget it will happen which is will be the owen benjamin backlash remember he hasn't right. been out that long doing his thing and well, I already see it. People saying he's an agent, he's a shell, he's a well, no, no, no. I mean the Alex backlash, you know, the, the big channel backlashes, where you know where other celebs, where all of a sudden Joe Rogan sits down and spends two hours just railing on. We're on bored him. with Joe Rogan. But uh, uh, Owen, Owen Benjamin he attacks uh, Joe Rogan all the time. Yeah, yeah. he Not does. Pain, uh, Joe Rogan mm -hmm. uh, talks about that he's a. Uh, just eating edibles and punching bags. <laughs> kind of he actually called Eric Dubay Eric Dugay. Yeah, exactly. He said, he said some other things about Eric. That Dubay. was too easy. And yeah. again, Eric Eric should know. I mean, you get watching Owen, you can tell is not a guy to be trifled with. No. I mean, when he gets ahead of steam going, you gotta stay out of his way. And so when Eric's in the chat room popping <laughs> off and going, Good. Are you are you high? You wouldn't. I mean, you got to remember, he might as well be on stage when he's talking to six thousand people uh -huh. in a in a thing. You, he might as well be in stage, and you do not. They're conditioned for that. You do not heckle the guy up there. You don't right. do it. They will come down on you like a ton of bricks. Yeah. So he'll I learn. I noticed that um, he sometimes tags me in his videos, which is weird. How does he know? I'm not a big channel. But that means he's tagging other flat earthers as well, I'm sure. So uh, just to oh, get I'm sure he's us to look at, just to get all of us to look at his stuff. Well, we already all are, but sure. I, unless he doesn't, unless somebody else runs his channel for him that's decided to do this. But hey, you know, I tag you in my videos and Jaron and Bob and, you know, anybody just because, because it's a helpful way to get your video seen by as many people as possible. So he's not dumb. He knows what he's doing. And he's already he already has nothing to lose, right? Because he, right. he's just going for nope. a non PC style. That Hollywood right? Hollywood burned him recently, and you know for different views, conspiracy based views, and so now yeah, he's gonna go for broke. He's gonna basically he's gonna keep amping up the volume until YouTube either shuts him down, which they may or uh somebody from the celebrity world i don't think any celebrity can talk him down at this point well people say that he's got to be a shill because he's talking about so many different issues on his channel and he's not been shut down but you know a lot of the issues he talks about i agree with he he's into hunting and i'm not into that but he uh you know he's anti-abortion he's pro-family um he he's he seems like a very good old fashioned family man who takes care of his own and can live off the land and has a dog. Um, he seems like a good guy. Yeah. He's nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Dog. He's living, he's living, he's interesting because he has a whole critique of the city, you know, how the city he finds it shitty. Yeah. And how he feels much more freedom by living in that way than he's living. Right. right. Um, and we all resonate with that, whether or not we live in a city. We all think it probably anyway, it would be quite ideal. Those of us who are in this awakening to go live uh, off the grid. But yeah. it's just very hard for people who have jobs or this or that or children. It's a hard jump to make. But he, you yeah. know, Owen Benjamin's talking about building a fence and, around his property and just I mean, he actually is doing it. He was said he built his fence yeah, he like the own. Amish do himself by hand, <laughs> yeah. not with a post right. hole digger. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I admire that. That's a yeah. man. I'm I'm hoping <laughs> I'm hoping that whatever flat Earth rep he ends up speaking with, uh, it goes over well. Uh, and whoever it is, whoever you are, if you end up talking to Owen, please buy you know. Well, who would you like it to be? Let's just play dream interaction. Who would I, who would I like to talk to him? Uh, you can only name one. Really? You can name yourself if you wish. Nope, nope. Not, well, no, even though he doesn't live far from here. Um, Rod Rodrigo, you've got to play the game too. One name. I've got I, my name. Would, I would pick just on someone that could keep pace. Hmm. This is this keep pace with his, and, and he's funny. I think he's one of the funnier flat earthers, and that would be David Weiss. Oh, I was going to say David Weiss, too. Yeah. All right. Rodrigo, who do you pick? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. That is not an acceptable. Uh, somebody, somebody, <laughs> somebody who would resonate with his views. I mean, I would pick 
if if it was going to be a longer conversation, depending on how long they're going to sit and talk to talk to each other, I would pick Jaren for a long conversation and mm -hmm. um, I was going to say and Rob Skiba. You know, a dream a, team uh, would Rob be, would be best. Rob would be good because I, he does bring it's up religion from time to time. Right. Yeah. That's that's why I was I thought about that because Rob would, would be able to, to smack uh, the issue. And also yeah. have that connection, but but I don't know. I think Jaron has covered lots of things that he I mean, could talk too. to him. Many There's other so many people. good people. Many we need people. dream team. There's so many. Yeah. We need all the flat earthers to vote on it, so nobody feels that there's favoritism, <laughs> and that's never going to happen. So whoever he ever talks to, that's who he's going to talk to. We hope it's not somebody. But keeping up with him is is the the challenge, right? It has to be yes. somebody who's not intimidated by. And who is excited about, about that's why work. I said that's why I would David, vote for David Weiss. Yeah, David is very excited about and um, David and, doesn't lead with the Bible or any religious text. No, he'll yeah. say blah 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 blah, and it's also in the Bible. That's his methodology, right. Right. Which, I, which I respect because it, it, whether or not you're a Bible literalist, it, it's, a, it's a great way to say it to somebody who isn't. Well, again, I put the feeler out to him, and he's local. So, if and there's was, so many things, though, I, I think he he glosses over many issues. He hasn't really gone deep into the into the questions. You know, uh, yeah. the the pressure, for instance, that all those experts that you've had, you know, that is quite a collection of of testimony that should be, you know, summarized. I don't know if it is. If you have done it uh, as a kind of series, as a clue, or if you cover it in more in extensive way in, in interviews, because if you get the key points for, from all of the, those experts and put them together, that would be a fairly convincing, interesting piece of work. You know what I'm saying? It would be. And Rodrigo, you'd be the man to do it. <laughs> Your next <laughs> project, <laughs> we got it set for you. <laughs> If yeah, I had all the raw material, I, I would actually put it together. It wouldn't, yeah. it wouldn't be so much of a stretch. It would be fun. Hmm. To well, this has been a very interesting conversation. I've totally and I have totally enjoyed it, and we've covered a lot. Um, you know what you're going to be doing, uh, dissecting uh, behind the curve, uh, Rodrigo, and just our conversation that came after that conversation, which is which has been really great. Um, yeah, I, I feel very excited about just everything we talked about. And Rodrigo, may I invite you back on in the future just to do a show on your whole thing in the future? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Wonderful. It's Thank you so much. And Mark, yeah. maybe you and I will do another show in the future. What do you say? <laughs> maybe. Should we bring the secret show back? Should we revive the old corpse? <laughs> How <laughs> old is it? It wasn't that old. <laughs> It might have still been slightly warm. <laughs> Remember back in the 90s, wouldn't we? But well, we're not like Seinfeld. Come on. Well, maybe we should take an audience vote from the live chat. No. No. Let's just do it. We don't care what people think. No. <laughs> we do what we want. No, no I've been mean, looking through the chat. It's not like we've gotten negative things. It's like, uh, seriously, I don't see a lot of boo, Mark's here, <laughs> boo. Uh, well, yeah, we'll we'll do the secret show. It's coming back, and I'm still going to be doing Uncurved with Nathan Oakley, and um, yeah, that's how it's going to go. And Rodrigo will be back with an interview just of him and his background, how he got involved in all this, and we'll hear some progress on uh, what he's doing with Behind the Curve and uh, on First Man and this new Mark Sargent project he's coming up to work on next mm -hmm. we hope well if if mark can share with me some of these things so i don't have to go trying to dig it out if he has it already somehow then um, i don't yeah, think yeah, it yeah. would be I'll quite help. a quite a stretch because i can just kind of you know look at one by one since i'm already writing about space skepticism in general uh it would yeah. be great information for that and and then i can we can just do a couple of edits and it will be a summary of you know what's the hottest kind of points from the the expert testimonies sure It'd be a lot of fun to do can do all right until we meet again thank you rodrigo his channel is in the description box of this video i love my flat earth family thank you everyone for being here give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to mark's channel too and until we meet again this has been the secret show and keep it flat Long live.